And now some special anniversary messages from friends of the show. Happy birthday, Hard Lore Podcast. Always an enjoyable listen, except for the little fact that Bo is not actually from Chicago. He's from the suburbs. In fact, his nickname in high school is the Suburban Bonando. I don't know what it's like to grow up in Winnetka. Super rich kids. Anyway, happy birthday. Congratulations, Hard Lore, on the one-year anniversary. It's awesome to see one of the greatest tag teams in hardcore history represented on that platform. And of course, I mean myself and Colin Young. F you, Bo. Number one enemy of the Bo. Eat shit. Bye. Hey, what's up, everybody? I just want to wish Hard Lore a happy one-year anniversary. I want to say my biggest critique. Is this show about f***ing fast food or is it about f***ing music? Jesus Christ. Happy one year to Hard Lore. Except the Bo, who didn't take me to get pizza in Chicago when I was there, and Colin threw through a tornado to get me pizza. Happy birthday. Happy one year anniversary to the Hard Lore podcast. <laughs> Thank you guys for some good laughs, some good stories, some good guests. We need more dying breed talk. We need acknowledgement of zero tolerance. We need acknowledgement of war zone. Jordan, the fucking G-O-D, he is here with us. Happy one year, boys. <laughs> and we will uh, listen, we'll be listening to more soon. What, what's this for? One year? Okay. Both fish. Alec, one year of hard war. So uh, what do you think of the show? I love the show. Just wait till I finish the question. So Alec, one year of hard lore. What do you think of the show? I love the show. Wait till I finish the question! Hey, this is Lars Fredrickson from All Kinds of Bands, and I want to wish uh, Hard Lore a very happy anniversary. I don't know what the anniversary's for. I was just told to do this by Colin. And obviously, he also told me to talk shit about Bo, but the only Bobo I know is the guy from Avail. So unless this Bo that you have, Colin, dances, I could give two f***s. So either way, happy anniversary for I don't know how many years. I'm just following orders later. Hello, welcome. Happy birthday to Hard Lore from Hard Lore. It's Hard Lore time. I'm eating what do we my, got? Uh, we got us. We got Hard Lore. One year, Bo. How are you? I'm doing really well. I'm eating a little, little keto cheesecake thanks to Factor Foods. Mm. Not sponsored, just checking it out. This is a uh, nothing but cake my wife got me to celebrate. It serves uh, 14 people. <laughs> About halfway done. Mm -hmm. Big nothing but cakes guy. What uh, what flavor is that? Confetti. Confetti. Oh. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you. Apologies mm. to the listeners with misophonia. What a year it's been, huh? How about it? I can't believe it. You did it. I, I was thinking... Is this the 51st episode? I guess. I think it is because I believe we missed one. So it actually checks out. Mm. Like if you do the math, <laughs> it's kind of right. crazy that out of a year we missed one. Yeah, we did good. I am so tired. I'm tired of <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm tired of sleep. No, but more so. How Do you feel fulfilled? Do you feel fulfilled from this show? I'm I'm going through a weird Fulfilled? transitional period in my life. Yes, sir, I do. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, are you kidding? It's amazing. I walked outside of my apartment today. There's construction on the street. Mm. There's a crane on the street. Somebody slapped a hard lore bumper sticker on it. On I swear on my street. cats, it wasn't me. On your own street that you So live. it's either one of my friends, which is kind of unlikely, or just a pure coincidence. Your friends are not doing that. They don't. Yeah, exactly. They, they didn't like buy different. the box. They're not that supportive. Exactly. Right? <laughs> it's crazy. Um, you know, there's like there's like landmark moments. There's there's a uh, there's trackable moments in a in a, in a mm. young man or woman's life where it's like, okay, this yeah. is this is this happened. Therefore, this is happening to me. Yeah. You know, no. like I heard, I heard Grimlock. Therefore, I like hardcore. I play hardcore. I watch Star Wars. Therefore, I like movies, you know? This is like one of those... This show is one of those things for both of us, you know? Explain. We're no longer 
guy from band. Oh, you know? yeah. Like most places I go now, if somebody is, wants to talk about something that I do, it's this. Yeah. So I'm a creative fraud, but <laughs> an incredible entertainer. Welcome to the club, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Great to have you. Creatively bankrupt, <laughs> comedically brilliant, you know? Morally depraved. Mor- no, I'm morals are sh- I'm straight edge, you know? Yeah. Um, morals good. Yeah, I don't. It's weird. Are you it's happy? Weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm happy. I'm a little nice. bored. Just bored. Wow. I got nothing to do. Cause you don't have a job. I don't have a job. This? I go to the gym. You want to start helping me more with the show? <laughs> how often? How, you son of a bitch. That was so dirty. You asked me probably three <laughs> times a week. Like, yeah, please. What? Like what can Let I do? Me, yeah. And it's just there's no there's no there's little everything that I have to do for the show are things I literally can't delegate. You know? Yeah, yeah I know. I can't <laughs> give you. I can't I w- believe you just did that to me <laughs> live. <laughs> they know it's a yeah, joke, yeah. right? Um, I would like to know some of your highlights. Looking Hot back. lore is yeah. is one of the great joys. Of my life. The Furnace Fest haunt lore. Yeah. And then the recap episode, which I told you I watched like the second half of the other night, mm-hmm. is like so fun. Yeah. It's a, it's a, that's a life. That's another life milestone. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm a ghost hunter. I am. <laughs> I, did. I do that now. I did it once. Therefore, I am one. Yeah. Um, I hope that one day that's all we're doing. <laughs> Straight up. Haunting and luring. Um, yeah. With, with friends. Yeah, absolutely. Just bringing up a, a pal, a Brittany Miller with us, yeah. you know, of yeah. sorts yeah. into a haunted place with a with a corn dog, with a corn with, or two or. <laughs> yeah, um, that was cool. I remember because um, the first thing we did in person was sound and fury. Yeah. And that seems sort of like, oh, well, this makes sense. Yeah, because it's sound and fury. It's like purely a hardcore thing. We knew every I mean, I didn't there was no work it, that needed to be done in terms of like. Wrangling bands for interviews yeah, because yeah. it was like just texting a guy, yeah, or something. And then Furnace Fest was like the next thing, and it was very like, well, this is a little outside of our wheelhouse. And then it was like, oh hey, we can kind of try to make content. However, it's just doing whatever. Now, <laughs> the the mini interviews give me the most stress of like anything. Really? Yeah. I wish I could do that. Really? Yeah. If I well, could, I swear to God, I would. You'd only. How, however, I will say that everything that you do, we're, you're digging a deeper hole because it becomes the style of like kind of our branding. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you're just gonna. It sucks, dude. <laughs> it's so much work. It takes so long. A, 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 a video editor that had to, if, like, if we hired a video editor that wasn't me. They would be rich <laughs> with, <laughs> with what it fucking costs. Like the hourly rate. If somebody was getting an hourly rate to do what I'm doing, they'd be they'd be living next to door to Jerry Seinfeld or something. So, uh, so the people know how long does a uh, two hour episode generally take? Uh, <clears throat> it takes probably sixteen hours for one episode. Yeah. Really? I yes. D- genuinely didn't know that. Compiling, uh, mixing audio. Mm-hmm. Editing, uh, exporting, which can take like six hours on its own. Okay, and I have to just stand by and make sure my computer doesn't fucking shut off, and then going back in to make a clip, and then it, like cl- a clip or two the next day. That's mm-hmm. that's a whole that's an entirely separate task. The reel that you see <laughs> is like the hardest part of doing the show because mm. it's like I gotta I have to I have to pick out of Two hours of three hours of stuff, 60 seconds that's going to sell motherfuckers on this whole Mm -hmm. damn show. I. (laughs) I hope you end this with a gun loaded. (laughs) Whatever sentence this is starting. I I, I basically I work two hours a week um, and I sleep until about 11 Mm -hmm. at the gym. Cook food. Video games. 
And that's how the show is made. <laughs> so highlights, uh, ups and downs. Yeah, I think the Justice episode. No, you know what? Fast food, the great food debate. Oh, the, that was kind of when we were like, wait. That was the one where we started showing, sending that to people to be like, here's what we figured out. Our, yeah, yeah, yeah. Our, we this is where we traction. hit our stride. Yeah, Justice stride. episode was two two hours of like Stern, at Howard Stern-esque pro- audio programming that just mm-hmm. never lulled or stopped. That was when a lot of people checked out the show, I think. Do you I have a, a favorite? Like a number uh, beside, one? Besides Haunt Lore. Like a one favorite episode. Yeah, let's let's keep it to a guest because like the recaps are too easy to oh, say. Oh, the guests. Yeah. Um, I think um I really liked J Mindforce. J Mindforce episode was it felt like just kind of having a third host. You yeah. Know? Yeah, he was so such a natural. Because he's so familiar with the show, mm-hmm. um, it really lent itself to just making the show better instead of us having to like explain the bits and the segments and the yeah. stuff he just knew. Just knew. That was a, that's a great episode. Yeah, um, that was Maddie. Great. Maddie is our biggest episode now. That was personally very big yeah, for me. It was course. very fun. And then of course, Justin. Oh, oh, come on, dude. That yeah. one is that's the one. I'm still getting texts about the one. That one, you know. Really? Like people. Like peripherally in my life, being like, mm-hmm. just checked out the Joust one. That was sick. <laughs> um, and I think it, w- it was sick. I think it was. Well, I learned a lot. So I can only imagine how other people felt. And we barely got through two records. Dude, it took that's 45 the, minutes to get to Under the Knife. That was. That's the crazy thing about it. It was that amazing. That the man is dense with facts and knowledge and dates and lineups and fucking. Yeah. And and you so we went to the Discord today for for questions right, which is a yeah. new thing for us. Oh, yeah. also there, we have a funny little ad to do. I'm gonna do this aside from the ad section. Okay. There's a tour right now that just got announced. What do we got? With Death Clock and Baby Metal. <laughs> Dude, fuck yeah! And tickets are on sale now. They want us. They want us to let you know that tickets for the Death Clock Baby Metal tour are on, are on sale now. No kidding. You ever hear that Gimme Chocolate song? I don't know what she sang, but I've never agreed with anything more. Do you know the song Karate? Because that song's actually like heavy. Yeah, I like like the chocolate one much more. (laughs) I think that's their master killer, personally. (laughs) You know, is the Gimme Chocolate song. Yeah, that's fun, Um, huh? Yeah, so they want us to tell you tickets are on sale now. Anyway, Uh, we, uh, we asked people... For questions as well as their favorite moments of the show. So hopefully most people provided that yeah. along with their questions. You hopefully. want to start with the with you? Should we should we are we kicking off QA? What are your what are your favorite moments from the show? Um honestly, it's a lot of the shit that we don't really <laughs> film, but just mm-hmm. like the the you know, being able to like go with a friend and do stuff that's like doing well is pretty awesome pretty life-changing kind of a thing you know just Um, think like like simple things like flying and getting a hotel yeah as a band is so expensive and stressful so stressful (laughs) uh and we just don't have to worry about that we don't worry about it and it's like fun it's still exciting i'm not getting sick anymore but every time i say that you do you know that that like viral dude where the guy's like, I'm not gay no more. Of course. I was. What is he saying? I'm delivered. I am delivered. Yeah. I feel like song. I need to cut that in every time I say I'm not sick no more. I'm not sick no more. He's not I sick was, no more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's just been like really easy and fun. LDB was a lot of fun. I uh highlights. Definitely um, dude, I think the single coolest moment was haunt lore the very first one when the dude recognized us like candidly oh yeah that was because that, that was we were getting like nothing. a thousand a week at that point yeah that was nothing that was super uh, early on so that was nice that was the first t- time where i was like <laughs> <laughs> that Me? Was really fun. yeah <laughs> that was really fun yeah, and just nice. uh i don't know it's been everybody's been so nice yeah I read all that. I can change that. I mean, I can be meaner. They know. 
One thing I need to say is people, <laughs> dude, some people don't understand that the Brody thing is a bit. <laughs> Brody, and I, I, got, I gotta say friends. something about that. Listen, yeah. I get to be mean to Bo. <laughs> Brody gets to be mean to Bo. Eight to twelve other people get to be mean to Bo. <laughs> You motherfuckers, lay, you, know, you lay a finger on him emotionally, <laughs> we're coming for you, okay? He's our target. He's your hero, okay? <laughs> People, yeah, there's there's definitely some confusion, I think. This is not a communal bit. It's ours. <laughs> it's our pit. You leave this man alone. <laughs> Roast me uh, if you must, John, you fucking <laughs> 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 Um, But leave Bo alone, basically, is what I'm saying. But overall, like very little criticisms. Some of the some of the like criticism I've ever seen is like us not being able to tell full stories and have to like neuter stories. And it's like, yeah, yeah, I don't want to get have, killed. Sorry. I don't want to get beat so up sorry. because I told some story you can't connect the fucking dots to. You <laughs> yeah. weirdo. Or get somebody in legal jeopardy. Yeah, it's just crazy. They're like, so. can can we uh, can we pay extra for the unbleeped version? No, it's illegal. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do some some Q's and A's. All right. Here's a really good one. Let's get to the meat of the episode. Why so funny? That's a great question. Uh, shout out to our our buddy, Andrew Morrissey, who I guess, I mean, I'm not going through and finding fucking clips of the, the whole show. I won't do it. No, no. I won't do it. But <laughs> there's a story we told very early on. Why don't you take it away, Bo? We were in Detroit, Michigan. And it was a, it was a oh, cold night, and there was a manhole cover that was just pouring steam, Ninja Turtles level steam. <laughs> and Dark Knight had just come out within like the pre the last two years, maybe. Andrew <laughs> ran, jumped in front of it, <laughs> jumped into the steam, and said, at first he said, "Hey guys, look!" And then you know, jumped into the steam. Who am I? <laughs> yeah, and then why so funny? And it was he didn't. And other famous Andrew uh, misquotes include ordering in and out monster style, <laughs> diving into a pool and saying, I'm James Bourne, <laughs> and yeah, so on and so forth. I got to get I got to get Emily to start making us like a list of. Yeah, we need a list. Um, they, I'm sure they happen every day. And every when he does one now, he knows and he, he looks at you and he goes, don't, don't. <laughs> Um, okay, first actual question. This is definitely for you, and I think it's a, a great question. Can you be too naughty in the pit? Like, yeah. I knew, yeah, of course. Like, if I've, you're purposely... I've never been too naughty. Send, <laughs> but, like, if you're purposely... Okay, I have two... Uh, we've said this before, but I have two actual qualms with anything it can be like being on stage with your mm. phone it can i know, be what you're, I know throwing what you're, shit whatever yeah. if you're to if you're making the show about you yeah not audience but yeah. just singularly you because oh look how crazy i am yeah like, like get fucked like that sucks that's yeah. just stupid obviously people would mosh with machetes and shit like that's happened yeah that's played, that's too naughty we played the tower you ever played the tower outside of cleveland probably I believe it was Cleveland, not Columbus, but it was definitely in Ohio. I think it's Cleveland. And there was like a mattress part of the wall and fireworks and marbles on the floor. That's fun. Yeah. Like that's fun. And it was the entire room just being rowdy. So it was, it was agreed I upon. Adore. It was agreed upon. Abs I, it was like the way that that place went for totally sure. Totally cool. I'm, totally. I'm, I'm beyond cool with that. I'm, mm -hmm. I would say I am begging Encourage for it. it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, but if you're purposefully like, I don't know, you know, no, so no. Yes, other than other than like a wep like a weapon that would kill a guy or girl, yeah, no. I mean, there was a <clears throat> riot extra extravaganza that was stopped because it was certainly too naughty. Mm -hmm. That was pretty crazy. I was watching that, you know. So even even from a band standpoint of like, go nuts, <laughs> not that nuts, you know, <laughs> it was like kind of the vibe. Um, so it's certainly possible. I think as long as people, it's moshing, you know, 
I don't think moshing, actual moshing, can be too naughty. Okay. That's my stance. Okay. So do Once you, you cease the moshing, <laughs> or the dancing, you know, uh-huh. and you're doing something else, maybe. Do you but have not a, to me, opinions on the term or act of crowd killing? I think it's awesome. <laughs> One of the best things. Period. <laughs> if there's a part that makes someone turn around and just start swinging fists at people. Yeah. It's a good part. It's a great part. That's It's a testament to the part more so than anything. I mean, think about that iconic picture of Saab kicking, spin kicking a dude in the face. Well, yeah. Would that be cooler if he there was no guy there to receive the foot to the face? Definitely not. It'd be a less cool picture. It'd be way less cool. It is what it is, man. And it is cool. When are you guys touring the UK? Ambiguous question. I don't know. Who's you guys? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. <laughs> uh, let's see. A Somebody is, make me an offer. Yeah, seriously. You make us. Yeah, you get us there. <laughs> I'm gonna come. <laughs> straight, yeah, straight up. Um, spank in a graveyard is a top moment. Also, now you know I don't. Just, he typed it kind of crazy. You know I don't touch my penis when I pee is a uh-huh. highlight. Yes. Um, how do you do long division, Colin? Oh, long, long, baby. Couldn't tell you. Really? Which one is long? Which one is long division? Long division is just when you do it. When you just oh, seven hundred eighty-five divided by fourteen. Like do oh, it. I would divide it by ten first, and then oh, really? Look divide I divide it by four. You know. <laughs> I <didn't> count that, <laughs> that adds up for sure. <clears throat> when Colin said soda is the best part of the meal, dude's yeah. a genius. Yeah, yeah. That's a long. Yeah, I mean, everybody should just kind of. <laughs> <laughs> this man's inhaling it. Is that Dr. Uh, Pepper or Coke Zero? That's a, a Dr. Pepper Zero. Uh, I mean, like, eating without a carbonated beverage. Painful. It's so fucking miserable. It's, it's suffering. Oh, you want to know something? Oh, do I have a tragedy for you? Went to a Taco Bell yesterday in the drive-thru. There's a nacho fries sign out of nacho fries, which is and just like kind of like, all right, but I, you go months without them. So whatever. yeah, I mean, the demand was probably high. So you're like, oh, good for you. Okay. That means. And then I okay. ordered my food, got to the pop. No Baja. Yeah. No Baja zero. No diet Mountain Dew. No diet Dew is one. Uh, what is there left? Mountain Dew. <laughs> Did you I do had, that? I had diesel. <laughs> I had you Mountain had heavy Dew? Dew? Dude, Dude I had that's to have ice cream. What else is there? That's dessert. What else do they have? <laughs> oh my god, diet! I would rather drink a diet Pepsi than a full Mountain Dew. Dude, if you look at the carbs on, I'm telling you, I say this as a joke all the time, but like a bowl of spaghetti and a Mountain Dew, about yeah. the same. Should we check? I don't know how we would do that, Matt. Well, 20 ounce Mountain Dew carbs. Mm-hmm. Is seventy eight grams? Yes, <laughs> of net carbs. And what's Holy a bowl of spaghetti? And then like a hundred like serving size of spaghetti. Um, what am I looking for? Carbs, nutrition uh-huh. facts. Dude, one cup of serving of cooked spaghetti containing between thirty seven and forty three grams. So it means so two, two cups, cups is a is Mountain Dew. You thought I was joking? It's literally a bowl of spaghetti. Is drinking a Mountain Dew? And you had the large, which is I like the, 32 ounces. You know ounces. I had the large. I had. So you I, had you had a, a what's called a heaping bowl of spaghetti. <laughs> I really did. I had the family size for me. So don't. This is. And, you know, people ask me for weight loss tips and shit all the time. Just stop drinking full sugar soda and you can basically do anything else in your life. Yeah. <laughs> There's, that's, that is the only line I won't cross. Tie from the show. I've seen you cross it, so. Slow when down. I've seen you have regular. No, so. you have not. Oh, okay. Well, I'm gonna when remember this moment, I, I don't have it cataloged, but I, you, know. you, oh, I'm telling you, you, I haven't had a regular soda on purpose in <laughs> six years. Okay. Ty told me that you like chain Ty, friend of the show mm-hmm. told me that you like changed his outlook on life. When you said, I'll work as hard as I have to in the gym so that I can eat whatever I want. Absolutely. That's a beautiful Which is thing. like, 
<laughs> like if you tell a personal trainer that they'll be yeah. like, I, I can't have you as a client. <laughs> yeah. It's the, the opposite of what you <laughs> you'll get. be fired. You'll be reverse <laughs> hired as a, they, they'll say, I don't want your money. I quit as your employee. Mm-hmm. Um, cause like lifting to eat is like the worst thing you can do. Uh, this, this is but once, one. once you get to the maintenance mode, mm-hmm. <laughs> who cares? Man? And once you stop giving a fuck about, I'm not competing in competitions. Yeah. I just want to feel good and have just a want to feel fun good, life. look good, eat good, fun life, balance. This is this is a funny one because I Facetimed you about this today, and I, and I swear on my cats, I did not read this. When are we getting a live playthrough of the Hard Lord theme? <laughs> we almost did it today. We almost did it to intro the episode. Yeah, we did. I think we his- I think we finished the song. Yeah. Finish a full song, have some cool guest voc- vocals. Do a two minutes to late night thing. Do a full on thing, and then, and then we can just play. It. Yeah. Okay. What fest do you guys most want to do interviews at next? Japan. Oh yeah, yeah, like fest, a, like a blood like axe. a Godzilla fest in Japan. Probably. I mean, Blood Axe would be amazing. Like any, yeah, Blood Axe would be good. Any actual thing. Bo cra- programming his Echo to call Colin a bastard man still kills me. They'll still do it. It's just not hooked up right now. But it's, it's It also worked about 40% of the time. Yeah, so. it, awful. Poor, I'm, a, I'm a terrible <laughs> programmer. <laughs> oh, this is a great question okay. from Dwayne at Sundown, very active in the Discord server. What does making it, quote-unquote, making it in the, <laughs> in the music scene mean to you guys? He's shoveling a bunt cake into his hole right now, into his literal pie hole. Making it? (laughs) Yeah. What does making it mean? I have a rather serious answer for that. Beautiful. Um, Man, this is a tough one. This is a heavy one. Um, I got a message on Facebook like 10 years ago, probably. Maybe nine, because in love, there's no law was out. Um, and it was from like an EMT driver who said that somebody who was gay tried to kill themselves or like after coming out to them, their parents. Yeah. And like during the EMT ride bonded with them by showing them in love, there's no law. And like that was enough for them to be like, have a conversation. And then like, they were totally fine. And like that was that was I, I don't know I, I can't I'll just cry if I start talking yeah, yeah, too no, much no, so like you. I don't want to um, but that was the moment where I was like I think I did something here you know wow like a song that in my mind is like okay this is a this is a song yeah I'm writing a song I'm not going I'm not fucking gonna change the world with a hardcore song you know mm-hmm. but I if, I if it affected one person in a way that was like. I'm not going to say life-saving because obviously that yeah. didn't happen, but like positively in a dark moment for them. Wow. And that was where it was like, I could, I could never write music again and, and be fine after just reading that. You know, That's a, a beautiful story. Excellent answer. Thank you. Mine was like, I, I don't have to worry about bills, <laughs> which hasn't happened yet. By yeah. The way. That's, that's impossible. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's simply one. There's like eight bands that can do that uh, of, is, amongst our peers. And your boy loves to shop. I'll tell you what. Yeah, absolutely. I just can't stop. Well, you got um, you got a good credit card. I'm uh, about to get a good credit card. I know. I know <laughs> you you got a real nice one. I have an Am- I have the Amazon one, which Amazon you know, one is yeah, pretty good. That's that's. So I wish that's, the points like, were better. You know. Yeah, I know. Sometimes it the, sometimes I get enough points to pay the fucking Amazon Prime yeah the <laughs> monthly $90 membership fucking yeah I know I just got I got an Amex <laughs> Amex Gold okay. which is not you don't have to like ha- do anything crazy to qualify for that yeah but um this is my first real card with points like real points oh okay four so X gonna... for restaurants dude <laughs> I'm at a restaurant two three times a day. I got so many points, you wouldn't believe it. <laughs> the amount of points I've accrued in two weeks <laughs> rivals my McDonald's app. No. <laughs> I 
I could probably book a flight to Japan for like, free <laughs> from the points I've made in two weeks of having this credit card. My God. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have the, the Amazon one is like my go-to, and then I have a Chase Sapphire as like my... I got a version. Sapphire, too. I never got... Sh- you know what? The sign-up yeah, reward the sign was up so crazy. Me. And also, you used to get into the like lounge, like the United Lounge or American Lounge or something at airports. With Sapphire? Sapphire? Yeah, it used to. Not anymore. Are you not anymore? I don't believe so. Because American made their own, those fucking cheap bastards. Who has the better biceps, Bo or Colin? I will tell you one thing. Come on. What? That picture I took of you in Louisville. At gambling? Dude, your arm looks (laughs) insane in that picture. I was getting a crazy pump from hitting the button. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. And that's what it, that's all it was. It was it was it was a smoke and mirror. But the answer is obvious. Um, it's Bo. I've been fucking. I'm huge now. You're in the gym. Um, what's what? your what's your uh, what's your like what's your routine? What's your split like? Um, Mondays are so today was dead like deadlifts. So back. Wow. Did and you just do deadlifts or did you do? I know I did deadlifts. I know it's what means, but I don't know the answer. Like I don't know what mine is, but I know what that means. Um, so I did deadlifts and like, I think leg press and uh-huh. lat pull down, lat pull down and rows. Okay. James made me a very simple, very basic. James. Okay, James gave yeah, you yeah. a okay, Wednesdays are good stuff. like triceps, um, hamstrings, I think, and then Fridays are biceps, shoulders. Whatever. The fun day. Shoulder day is my favorite day. Oh, it's the best. Love it. You get that one vein going, and you're just... <laughs> see, I don't have the vein. You see, if you can look at me, you'll see. It's because you drank I wasn't... Uh, a full sugar soda at seven and a half years That's ago. That's why. Honestly, amazing. sugar, there's like, if you drink, if you carb deprive and then have like a gnarly carb, oh, you look dude, fucking crazy. When I, when I was full on keto, mm-hmm. I... <laughs> we both just have sounds going on right now. When I was full, full on keto, and I would like have like a little cheat meal, the next day I looked so good. Yeah, you That's look. It, you just like. And I, um, but I, I have no vascularity whatsoever. Maybe it's because I'm like body fat or whatever. Mm. Too fat yeah. to be there. Yet, I guess. Favorite moment: Bo realizing Phoenix is a food cheat code and still underselling. Does what does that March mean? of the pigs belong to the greatest breakdown list? What? I don't know what either of those things mean. No, I'm sorry. The one Keep who's scrolling. <laughs> yeah, you lost me. Master killer of all movies. That's a great question. Oh, my God. One? <laughs> I mean, that's what master killer means, I guess. It's, it's Silence of the Lambs. Really? Yeah, it is. Think I about didn't it. know. I, did, I love the movie. I just didn't know you were a particular I'm of And I'm, I'm being pretty objective here, I think. Script, performances, direction. Uh, cinematography. It looks pretty good. Uh, it, it looks, looks pretty great good. The, for the era. The, the score is a little janky. The score is fine, but like it was one of the first to win like an Oscar in all of its categories or whatever. Oh, okay. You know, I, I would probably are... say like The Godfather or something that's a little yeah. kind of obvious. Um, but stalk. what would you rather watch right now, The Godfather or Silence of the Lamb? Honestly, the guy I just watched Silence of the Lamb like two weeks okay, ago. Okay, we'll see. Yeah. So yeah, two yeah, weeks yeah. ago, you were like, I'm going to put Silence of the Lamb. The movie f- is incredible. It's perfect. Do you have a favorite part? <laughs> <laughs> the way, dude, the fake out when Clarice is actually oh, at the house man. at the end. And the and when... And um, the FBI is raiding. And, the and MT- when Crawford goes... Starling, yeah, and like you realize what's going on, dude. And then, oh, wait, oh, was she, <laughs> was she a great big, big fat person? That's, I mean, that's the best part of the movie. <laughs> she's yeah, just fucking true. dude, she's true detective season four. Oh, really? It's Jody. Woo, okay, damn, dude. Got season two was such a letdown for me. I, I've <laughs> never, I never saw it. Yeah, don't. I skipped to three, but I heard it's good, so it's not. It, it isn't. It, I'm it, going to like it to spite you, I think. I think you will too, but that's that's just because you're full of shit. That's always. just me. But there at the big be- at the end of the very first episode, I'm not gonna spoil anything, but there's uh-huh. like a bit of an occult thing, and you're like, here we go. Uh-huh. Here we go, baby, we're back. Uh-huh. And then it's just is like never addressed. 
I saw Bo is Afraid last night. Yeah, how would you think? Oh, I saw I, what you thought. I, I think it. it. I think it rocks. Yeah, but I can. If somebody tells me it's the worst movie they've ever seen, you might. I would say it. I could see that. <laughs> I saw Redfield on Saturday. I saw that too. What'd you think? I loved it. I had a great. You time. loved it? Yeah, I had a great time. I had a ball. Oh man, I liked how how ninety minutes it was. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very it was just like, like 89 shark, dude. Exposition. <laughs> uh, it feels like an... what, Dude. Why is why are parts of it like slapstick? Like Aquafina, there's a scene where Aquafina is like walking away in the hallway and turning around. Yeah, and like, she keeps turning around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, it's like, it felt like airplane for a second. And then it goes back to being kind of self-serious. Kind of, yeah, yeah. Um, Terrible yeah, so movie. I, I, Oh, you hated it. Oh, it's awful. Incredible action. Nick Cage just kills it in every scene. It's a terrible movie, but I think it's a like self-aware kind of terrible. Yeah. Absolutely. Like campy cult classic type terrible. Absolutely. Why Dude, would they not put that out in like October? I don't know. I mean, that's ridiculous, of course. There's a, a, a part towards the I forget what it is, we'll get back on track, but where he really lets out Nick Cage ism out, where he like he says, I think he's going to say, hail Satan. And he goes like, hail. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I fucking died, dude. Mm -hmm. I, had a, I, had a, I had a great time. It was, I could have used more violence and a mm -hmm. little more Nick Cage and a little less like, I just care about my sister. Yeah. But I had a blast. Yeah. That was fun. I, I'm just going to come out and say it. I like Aquafina. She was, dude, I, I thought she was very funny. I like her. Okay. Yeah. Sue me. I think she's great. <clears throat> Sorry. Odds CM Punk shows up as a guest. It's not zero. We might hear from him later in this episode. <laughs> um, Dream. Oh, you think I'm joking, but we'll see. Dream tour lineup with retired or past, retired slash past bands and modern bands. So just like book a dream tour. Let's make it a four band tour. Like a tour I want to see. That you want to see that you're not on. Can I use dead guys? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Typo. Yep. Dying breed. <laughs> uh, Marauder Master Killer set mm. under Dying Breed. <laughs> For some reason. I don't I didn't book I didn't I wasn't the agent. I'm just going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um <laughs> you didn't promote. I didn't do it. Who's opening? A modern band has to open. Mm -hmm. Modern band. Modern band. Metallica. <laughs> uh, modern band. Who? What modern band would fit on that? You know. I just told you. <laughs> um, I have no idea. Uh, something, something witchy. Chelsea like ingrown. Would. Ingrown can open. Oh, ingrown. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. Yeah. Mine would be Metallica headlining. I love it. Typo is direct support. It's a good tour. For sure. Uh, Dying Breed? Chaos, Chaos AD era Sepultura with everybody. Wow. So. wow. Andreas, everybody. And opening uh, the Misfits. <laughs> no modern man. No. Fuck them. They said modern man in the question. You should. No, it, says, it said, oh, it did say. Mm -hmm. It says dream tour lineup with retired slash past bands and modern bands. All right. Uh, so kick the fucking misfits off. Misfits are off, and put in grown on. <laughs> <laughs> put in grown on. Um, dead body. Nice. We I almost did a spit. I almost did a spit take as a bit, and then I realized everything I own is ruin all of in front stuff. of me. <laughs> yeah, my life depends on these eight items here, so I can't do a spit take ever. Sadly, worst band you've toured with, played a show with, or encountered. <sighs> Damn. I have a diplomatic answer for this. So if you want me to take it away, I will. Could you? Yeah. So we did a tour with At The Gates, The Haunted, and Decapitated. Mm -hmm. Decapitated, the actual guys in the band and their sound guy, delightful. Mm -hmm. Super nice, very friendly, just what I, like very professional, you know? They had a tour manager... And a fill-in bass player whose names I don't remember, whose bands Perfect. I don't remember, like nothing. Perfect. 
who were the one, some of the worst people I've ever encountered. Wow. The bass player was just kind of like annoying, but he was like mm. fine. But he was, it was just like, oh, I got this eight string, like just like tear, just like please shut up. Uh. The the TM for decapitated was so. We had on our rider X amount of uh, Red Bull. That's all we ever asked for. It's like Diet Same. Coke water, Red Bull, Cheez right? Its. Sugar free Red Bull water. It's the whole any band I'm ever in. That's the yeah, whole rider. Like stage towels, yeah. if you can, please. Oh, that'd be uh, crazy. That's a crime. I wouldn't go that. I, I know better. <laughs> but, you know. So, Chris, we were we were in Texas, I think, and uh, Chris was enjoying a Red Bull, and this guy was like, "Hey, you know, that's for all of us." And the tour manager, who the chick who had toured with Weird Al, yeah, was like up there with us. And you know what I got to do. I know you can hear it. You're turning the fucking. If you don't change this motherfucker. I got it. I'm just going to turn it off. I'm going to have to kill you. I know. I understand. I was like, man, somebody's drilling or something. Anyway, stop it. He was like, hey, that's for all of us. And Chris like knew that it was ours. It was in our fridge. And Chris did like a very he went. "Ah, I love Red Bull. Like that's what that was his response. Yeah. And the dude said something along the lines of like, yeah, fucking choke on it, man. And like walked out and the, the TM like pulled out a knife and was like, you want me to kill him? Well, why like, wouldn't the a, TM? It's like maybe, a joke. Well, maybe it's he was such a little fucking bitch. Baby. That there'd be no point in even saying it didn't that. matter. Actually. It just, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It just didn't matter. She knew mm. as long as she knows what do we care? You know? Yeah. Terror. Just, terrible always like i could have been in europe with like the worst band you've never heard of right now yeah. instead of this it's like with, yeah, i wish like you were wolf too. mother or something yeah yeah no, it was like could have been in brussels with wolf mother right now <laughs> yeah dude <laughs> uh what was the question was it uh, she t- played a show with toured with pl- oh. or played a show with oh. slash encountered <laughs> greg bannock spoken word is the worst band i've ever played a show <laughs> with for sure uh <laughs> Uh, toured with we're very fortunate to be in a world where it's like you're that's not really gonna no happen. we could we kind of go out of our way to tour with bands we want to tour with yeah yeah you know i might be the worst band i've ever toured with <laughs> you know i might be that answer for some of these people it's like i tore yeah. that twitching tongues band one time oh my god so that's fine Greg Bank spoken word. What's the next question? <laughs> next question. Favorite two thousands Billboard top ten hit. Two thousands. Yeah. When did uh, Teenage Dream come out? Two thousand ten. Really? Are you really this good at dates? Yes. With music. Yes. Do you do you remember the album Grand Teenage Dream, Dream was was the album was two thousand ten. I can wow. promise that. You're right on. Yeah. That took are me you, one second. Are too. you good with like birthdays and anniversaries no. and stuff too? No. Oh, it's it's only applied. My to my mom's birthday is October 5th and my dad's is June 2nd. And <laughs> yeah. I get this two and the five mixed up every time. I'm like, is dad, is it dad's birthday? Is my mom's birthday? You know? Yeah. Uh, on June 5th every year, I'll, I'll have already wished my dad happy birthday. And I'll be like, did I miss it? Fuck. Um, no. But uh, 2000s, dude. Uh, bleeding love. You remember that one? How many? Keep bleeding, keep keep bleeding love. No, I think it's Le- Leona Lewis. Uh, unwritten, dude. You know, unwritten. Sing it. I don't Staring think I Staring at the plank page before you open up the dirty window. No. Let the sun illuminate the words that you made me reach <laughs> That's a fucking masterpiece. The number two song of the year 2000, a little ditty called Smooth, featuring Rob Thomas. That was 2000? That's what it sounds. Yo, know, that song terrorized the Billboard charts yeah, straight up for to this day. The <sighs> airwaves, and you can't turn on a radio for an hour. You can't scan around without hearing Smooth. Dude, the, the Matchbox Boys? Couple, Couple tracks. fucking tracks. Couple tracks. Straight up down on you. I was a little down here. I wish the ring up world. Uh, I didn't know that was 2000. That's crazy. Yeah, 2000. Uh, number six, Destiny Child, say my name. I'm still going. I mean, 
Dude, umbrella Rihanna umbrella is, goes I'm fucking my, crazy. Um, and the, and the, 2000s the, Britney um, Spears shit was good too. Like uh What was it? Was Toxic was in the 2000s, right? I mean, Toxic be, is better than most songs in history. Do you, know? you want to hear something? Um you know the song Stronger? I'm stronger than yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. Right. The the little half step key change is my loneliness ain't killing, killing me. me no That's a throwback more. to my loneliness. Yeah. Is killing me. Genius. I know. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's the line. My loneliness Dude, ain't killing me. People don't realize. I guarantee you, comment below if you knew that about that song. That's like why it's so triumphant, you know? It's amazing. Yeah, it's, she. I mean, she. There's those. She has those all over the place throughout the discog. Really, really? through some Swedish guy wrote some line for her that was like, "This is, <laughs> this is the same as the line on your your first album that Doing I wrote for you." Bit. She's like, okay. "All the small things." Uh, number forty. <laughs> Everclear. <laughs> number fifty-four. Which one is Everclear? <laughs> it was the song "Wonderful," but I just remember like everything to everyone or. I will buy you a new house. Oh, yeah, yeah. That one's dog shit. Uh, <laughs> Everlast. Now, that's the good now shit. Now, that's the caller a sinner and the caller a sinner and the caller a <laughs> uh, uh Yeah, a couple tracks on this. Dude, number 73, sure. forgot about Dre. Wow. All right. How's that number not. 73? We'll keep, keep moving along. Relax. That's enough answers. Favorite band from every state, alphabetical order. Fuck off. Uh, okay, what are the states? Arkansas. Evanescence. <laughs> Dude, finding out that Evanescence was American, one of the most shocking moments of my whole life. I love the polyrhythm in uh, Wake Me Up. I think that part's awesome. <laughs> favorite casino. Do I have a favorite? I wonder. Bellagio. If I have a mm. The Aria. Mm. <laughs> those are my two. Okay, those are those. Those, those are, are my two. top two. Yeah. Mine's gonna be the uh, the Hard Rock in Tampa. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, the Caesars in Southern Indiana. Yeah, thank you. But I mean, I love Caesars Southern Indiana now. Yeah. I didn't for a couple days. No, you sure surely did not. Bo, if you ran a choir boy style mod rig, what would you use? What the fuck does that like what for? The hell for, does that mean for guitar? For guitar uh -huh. shit. Um, probably something by Earthquaker could do it. And um, like a Strymon. What the fuck you, is that? You got the money, brother. Would you ever do a live performance of bands with interviews? What does that mean? Would you ever do live performances of bands with interviews? Like have them play on Hardlore live? I guess. It says you have the connect with Taylor. Do you know Taylor? Young? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a great question. From, uh, I would I would do that. That's a good idea. That is a good idea. I guess. Like live on hard lore. Grab a here. And then Play we talk to him after. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's fun. Okay. What's your favorite album layout or booklet? Ooh, that's a good one, dude. I got. I told. I showed you a picture, but I got that the typo booklet. Right. Fucking amazing. It's so nice. Yeah. Um. I have a Danzig two. I believe it's Lucifuge tape that folds out into a cross but it's upside down because of the way it's orientated and that's really fucking sick layout can't be your own <laughs> I made some good ones um, <laughs> layout anything with like a nice sparkly gold or silver <laughs> on the front you know like a mm. shiny oh I remember um, Trypticon has really good layouts. Oh, really? They always do like they they only do a thousand or so of like every single thing. They like they, they it's like a ten inch. You know I hate ten inches. I know you do. But it's like a ten inch box set, so it's very cool. Someone lost. Yeah. Someone broke just even. Okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Question: 
Do you think the overwhelming positive reaction to knock loose set at Coachella leads to more hardcore adjacent acts at more traditional festivals? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Um, sure. It's funny that it, like hardcore fests want to be Coachella and Coachella wants to be a hardcore fest. You know? <laughs> wow. Like they want to have, I bet you fucking mind force is playing next year or some shit. You know, <laughs> they're going to see the TikTok of the, the girl with the pink tights getting fucking whopped. Dude, and she they're gonna gets be like, obliterated. she gets hit so hard, it's crazy. Um, they're gonna have, they're gonna be like, we can eat that on our fest <laughs> next year. I um, need sun hats flying. Yeah. Meanwhile, a lot of fests are are like emphasizing non hardcore bands. You know, right? Yeah, it's a mixed bill. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm a firm. It's a cliche, but I'm a firm believer of rising tide raises all ships. It just does. Knock Loose has has what is is being considered like an all timer Coachella set, not even yeah. just like an all timer like, yeah. and they got like a lot like of a, not even like a regular on all spectrums of music. They're having one of the sets that people are talking about. Yeah. So then they, and then they're gonna post your fucking band's demo a week later, <laughs> and now yeah. some plebe who just saw him at Coachella bought a fucking puka shell, and now they follow Brian. They're gonna be like, oh, I heard the new you heard your shitty demo. I love it, you know. <laughs> so you never know. It raises all the ships. Um, this is a great one. Hit me. Favorite spelled with a U. So we got we got a spy. next <laughs> favorite objectively bad movie. Oh, that's a great I question. Have, I have one that is immediate for me. I have so many. Waterworld. Dude, Waterworld was a hit. But did it? Yes, it has so it, it. Is so is it objectively a good movie? No, but it was. But it was. That. I don't think it was. I mean, it was such a hit. I saw it in the theaters. I remember. And you loved it, right? Fuck it had a. It had a it. show at Universal until like two years ago. Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> and how <laughs> I awesome! Saw it was a it? few years ago. It was fucking amazing. The mirror, uh, yeah, dude. that means that it did pretty. It did well enough to justify a show. At Wild Universal. Wild West. You love Wild Wild West? I think Wild Wild now West. Now, that's is, a bad movie. That it's fun. Dude, the, the fucking back and forth that Will Smith and Loveless give each other when they first see each other, and it's like yeah. a racial joke versus a uh, ability joke. Yeah. Crazy. Whoo! It's crazy. Yeah. That movie is incredible. You know that's the guy who plays uh, Lockhart in Harry Potter? Yeah. Gilderoy. He's, cool. a, he's a director. Yeah, well. I, he directed I, the first Thor movie. You know that? Oh, Jesus Christ, did he? Yeah. Kenneth Branagh is his name. Mm. I think he might be a Sir Kenneth Branagh. My apologies. He's, he's no joke, dude. He's like a... He's been knighted, mother. Um, mine would be Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Yeah. Sick movie. He tears Terrible. off the arms. Dude. That part is so stupid. Yeah, oh, my yeah. God. It's like the real power was in me the whole the time. Whole no. Time. No. You're not supposed to even have those arms. <laughs> You're supposed to be like a beacon of hope for like that's that's supposed to be a cool thing that like you, he's part cyborg, you know? Right, right. He doesn't just have enhanced arms. I'm criticizing the my own pick for Dude, for best uh, bad mother. Movie. You're alive. Too bad you shall die. <laughs> <laughs> I always I, thought that that was uh what's her face from the OC? Uh, Marissa's mom. I thought it was Marissa's mom. Mm. Turns out it's just a lady that looks exactly like Marissa's mom. Sindel. Playing, playing Queen Sindel. Um, Motaro dude, looks fucking Motaro, badass. Motaro, dude. Uh, Sonya recast. Raiden recast as Mr. Big from... Uh, yeah, Mr. Big. Oh, no, not Mr. Big. He's the, not he's Mr. Different Big. Guy. Right, right, right. Right. He's the other guy. He's the other guy. <laughs> from Sex and the City. Um, dude, Johnny Cage dying immediately? Immediately. <sighs> Garbage. Taylor would say 47 Ronin for this answer. He loves 47 Ronin. Is that not a good movie? Yeah, I think it's an, a, a pe most people would say it's a bad movie. <laughs> uh, objectively bad movie? Yeah. You know? I think I think Wild Wild West counts. Yeah, no, it is. It does. Um it was it was reviled. Yeah. You know what was you know what? This is a generational divide this one. Okay. Hook Fuck, I can defend Hook. That's what I'm until saying. Until I'm blue in the face. Spielberg doesn't even like it. Dude, for those of you who don't know, screen pro, screenplay Carrie Fisher, special effects assistance 
George Lucas. Mm -hmm. Spielberg directed it. John Williams, John Williams did the score. Yeah. That, not Hoffman. only did John Williams do the score, it was supposed to be a stage production. Uh, so there's full f songs with lyrics and vocals and everything written uh, by John Williams. Dustin Hoffman, Robin Williams, uh, Glenn Cl Is it Glenn Close? Who's in Who Dresses in the Pirate? Oh, it's like a fun cameo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And Julia, Julia Roberts? Roberts? Dude. <laughs> I, I... Who is I, amazing. I adore... And Maggie Smith as yeah. Lady Wendy. I adore that movie. Anybody like, un, over like 35 or like 37 right now yeah, fucking hates Hook. Really? Other than my dad. My dad was fully down with Hook. But, like, know. there's a weird thing where if you were a certain age, Hook sucked out. to you. Oh, that's so funny. But, like, people our age and younger were like, this is the most magical thing. Yeah, I'll cry dude, right now. Watch when I saw John Williams perform with the Chicago Orchestra, yeah, they played... And I was like, I was fucking dying. Yeah, yeah. It was it was incredible. And you know the kids at the end, the you're the pan now scene? They didn't know. Yeah, I know. None, none of them knew he was who he was gonna pick. He, dude, when he like oh. <laughs> it's so fucking good. Dude, Hook is incredible. Hook That's is incredible. incredible. Um, all right. Absolutely love the Haunt Lore episodes. Please do more of them. They are grand. We would love to. Questions. Do you ever plan to do a live stream interviews at any point? Kind live of. Stream. So here's the thing. I could go live on the Discord right now or yeah. invite, I'm just saying, or invite yeah. people into the Zoom like we did with Josta. Yeah, yeah. We could do that, but we got something better kind of in the tank yeah. anyway. Just, just we'll feed you soon, baby birds. <laughs> Energy drink of choice that aren't coffee. I'm a sugar-free bull. Me too, but I'm about to be a white monster man for life, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Scratch that. Go back a second. Uh, Chipotle, Moe's, or Qdoba? It's not even close. I know you have PTSD from... I would Chipotle. rather drink the cheese alone from Moe's and not get anything from any of them. Wow. I was going to say Chipotle. When are you two going to do a mortician cover band? That's what? Never. Keep scrolling. <laughs> Is God's Hate ever coming to Minneapolis? Um, uh, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> when are you guys starting your Christian hardcore cover band, God's Way? Keep scrolling. <laughs> <laughs> Favorite moment hearing Sean Martin gut laugh to kale stories oh you guys yeah, still need to get him on we have a mini with kale that's really good it's we do funny. it's quick we've Explain said it's the, the serious hatred. oh colin are you ready this is just a a nice underhand throw to you okay explain the hatred of melodic hardcore and what bands you would consider are part of that genre this is tough <laughs> it sucks man it sucks it's not melodic hardcore to me is is like a it's an oxymoron almost mm. you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like Christian death metal is an mm -hmm. it's an oxymoron to me. Um, I think it can be I do think it can be done well. I think betrayed is straight up good, you know. Do you like Turning Point? Like sure, I'm no I'm not. The, the turning Point doesn't come on and I'm like yo turn off Turning Point. Sure, yeah. sure, sure. I'm, I'm oh. just saying I think that that is... Yeah. I can absolutely... I, I will absolutely defend that. Um, it's just not... It's not for me. There's nothing about it that was for me. It it came into a, in, in during a point where it was so the opposite of what I wanted for music. Yeah. And then it... Like, it, like a plague. It was a virus. You couldn't get rid of it. It was everywhere. It was everywhere. Uh, it, was, it was scary. Oh, jean shorts, swagless. That's the other part. It's swagless as well. And I'm is. guilty of it. I'm I'm saying these things because at the time, I was guilty of it. Um, would you consider? And this is you know f certified friends of the show. I'm not even trying to throw shade or rustle any feathers, mm -hmm. but have heart. Yeah, but they got pits, dude. 
They do got pits. I think I think melodic hardcore bands are pitless. Aha. Uh-huh. So you like, hear- like the ones that I consider, they just like I don't understand the intention of the music. You so know? you hear octave chords and you go, oh no, but then you hear like a stone. But then I hear like, like a stone. I'm like, okay, they still they still encourage spin kicking at least. Yeah. When it's when it's all it's like we're we're a punk band, you know, we're a, we're a, that's that's the vibe. Like they're are, they're a hardcore band full of hardcore guys, but they're like, we want to be a punk band. You know what it's and they're a lot just of? doing what is that? Uh, it's a lot of like eighth notes on kicks with cymbal wash, just like and I will just like builds to nothing, to nothing, to thank you. <laughs> you know, like I don't, I, I never got the purpose of that. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I think if you enjoy it, and because there's like lyrics that are like meaningful or it's oh. like catchy, then go I'm for lyrics it. second. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Lyrics second. If the if the tunes rock, then and I and I like the noises that the, the guy is making or the girl is making, yeah. then I'll read the lyrics. Yeah. And then I'm in. But some of my favorite songs in the world, I don't know all the words. Oh, you know? Are you kidding? You think I know the? I I don't know if I know all the lyrics to a single Metallica song. How could you? There's too many. There's so many. Dude. Yeah. We're doing that soon, right? Yeah. Reviewing the new Metallica? Yeah. Maybe next week? Okay. <laughs> uh, this one's for me. <clears throat> oh, how we met would be fun. We, we've we covered it. Go back to the very first episode. Yeah. Second episode. Um, Colin heaping glucose. What? <laughs> we met... As as most people in our kind of world often do, is just kind of through pe- other people. Mm-hmm. It was a parking lot of a fest. Yeah. Yeah. Food is always talked about, but <laughs> usually in regards to meals. As someone mm. who snacks hard, I want to mm. hear your thoughts on snacks. When at the grocery store, what is a master killer of snacks? I'm a popcorn man, so catch me smashing whole bags of Skinny Pop on the regular. May I. Question. I don't really snack all that much. Snacking yeah. is like is is every person's kryptonite, you know? Yeah. Cause you could eat three, two pretty bad meals a day and be pretty fine. You know? Mm-hmm. Cause like there's gonna be some nutritional value in all of them. Snacks are where you are eating empty no nutritional value type calories, you know? And while you're probably on the couch or working. Chilling. Just, just chilling, yeah, yeah. But I love a snack, so there was there was one, dude, the, like, sickest I ever was with, like, mm-hmm. eating disorder stuff. <laughs> I planned out my exercise routine and my diet so that I could perfectly eat a whole box of cheese today. Like, to the calorie? Yeah. Like to the 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 the, the, ma- the grams of carbs that were in a full box <laughs> was the only carbs I would eat a day. But I would eat that full box a day. I think it's cool that you talk about that time period. Yeah. As Dark an time. eating disorder. Yeah. Not that I ever objectively was like, what the fuck's going on with Colin? Right. But like most maybe people in my life were. For people that were like directly around me were were more concerned then than they were when I was bigger yeah huge but it's it's a it's an amazing you know you went from skinny little man to yeah. not skinny little man to a skinny little man <laughs> to yeah. thick ass boy you know yeah and that kind of happened um throughout <laughs> throughout the you can track that on in the show kind of really yeah because i was probably 180 you were starting when, to get big yeah, I was started. 180. Well, I got big, broke my hand, oh, got right. small. Right. You know, just started doing crazy cardio. Uh, and then got down to like 180 or so. Soft. A soft 180. 175, maybe. Mm. Can't uh, imagine. Oh. I'm about 220, 225 now. Rock hard. Other than. <laughs> I'm 205 pounds. Other than 
and soft bread. It's fine. Um, yeah, I don't really snack, and I'm, I'm doing... <laughs> this was the snack question. <laughs> yeah, and I'm doing... Uh, I'm doing low carb again now, like with a meal plan and like a meal kit service and stuff. So right. I'm, I'm pretty but seriously pick, pick watching three it. snacks. Um, uh, like, like the golden time? arches of, of snacks. Okay. Great question. Um, <clears throat> mm-hmm. String cheese. Oh, delicious. I don't even count that, dude. That's so good for you. Yeah. Six grams of protein per string cheese. I mean, they're great and they're keto. So it's like best of both worlds. Oh, dude. <sighs> Pop tarts. Okay, see now that's a snack. That's a, that's a full on snack because I, yeah. I I forget about this bow. That's older mm. bow. Even right. even just now before I started dieting again, I w- I didn't have snacks. I would just right. eat like two big meals a day. Sure. I would usually cook, but um, a pop tart, dude, s'mores, pop tarts, chocolate fudge, pop tarts, cinnamon, or so you li- okay. So you like uh, you don't like the fruit ones as much? Not as much. No, no. Did you like the Spider Man ones? So the Spider-Man ones, I believe, were the wild berry ones of old, yeah. and I loved those. So yes, that was the last time I ever ate a pop tart was when Spider-Man. the Spider-Man ones came out. As because I was like, I want to be solid, have solidarity for Spider-Man mm. as a kid. You know, mm. like, I wanted them. I wanted to support Spider-Man, so I got the Spider-Man pop tart. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's see. What's the third cereal? One? Cereal doesn't count. That's a meal. how it does not count. Meal. So many people snack on cereal in between meals. So many people. But you're not getting cereal at a fucking gas station on tour, you know? Very, okay, okay, great. Excellent point. Yeah. Um, on tour, then, Reese's Sticks. Great answer. <laughs> oh, my God. Those things. <laughs> Mine would be. And then Sun Chips. Which flavor? I'm a blue bag man or the garden salsa, the red bag, if you can find them. They're rare. That's Subway oh, exclusive at this point. Like Target. Yeah. Uh, for me, it's hot and spicy cheeses. Yeah, best snack ever. Yeah, is the best savory snack of all time. <laughs> um, this doesn't really count, but this mm. was my after school snack: the two pack Red Baron deep dish pizza. Oh, dude, fuck yeah! The one that's like it doesn't that count. Big. That's a de- definite meal. But I crush both of them. I wouldn't <laughs> eat all that. I would starve myself all day so I could get home and eat both of them. Mm-hmm. And my dad would get like one pack of those a week. Yeah, <laughs> so it was yeah, like yeah. my snacks for the week. I was gone Monday at 3 30 PM. Um, <laughs> Dude, I loved hot pockets too. Meatballs, and mozzarella, hot pockets. I preferred bagel bites and the red Baron deep dish over that. Do bagel yeah. bites count? Was the Definitely. That's the best. That's better Dude, than when pizza's on a bagel, Jesus. Colin, you can have pizza Anytime. Anytime. Okay, then the bagel bites are the best snack of all time. They are so good, dude. They, like to this day, the I see. I had another era w- oh. in my eating disorder where I was like, you know what, these aren't that bad for you, and I was working them into my plan. You know, wow. Like that was my my post workout thing was like forty bagel bites. Wow. The full party pack, the family fiesta pack of bagel <laughs> bites. Uh, does California slash Chicago have ocean? That's good. Good call back. If you had a signature dish or item from a restaurant or fast food joint, what would it be and where would it be from? What would the Colin McDonald's <laughs> meal be? Oh, like what the, would the hard, hard like, lore McDonald's meal be? Like if we got like a Travis Scott type like thing? Like the Cardi B thing, yeah. It would have to be a little bit of both of us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be two large Diet Cokes, right? Genius. Yeah. Two large Man- Diet Cokes. Mandatory. Just Easy. Two large fries, uh, 40 nuggets, <laughs> <laughs> and a Big Mac with no cheese and extra sauce. Okay. And then what would your thing be? I would do a McDouble ketchup only. <laughs> Dude, this meal would be huge. It would smash. This would it would be like sixteen ninety nine, but we'd kill it. Stats? $16.99? Dude, lately, how much is forty nuggets? Ten bucks? Oh, a lot, yeah. No, forty. Yeah. I, I think it's ten bucks. I think no. twenty is five. What? Nugget, Nugget economy has has improved while everything else has. Let me check my altered. Let me see here. I, that can't be possible. That's like Burger King prices. Nuggets and meals. 
Yeah. 20 nuggets, 6.99. Wow. 40 it's nuggets, crazy 12.99. Dude, 6 nuggets is like five is like 4.99. <laughs> so it's like wow. you might as well get 20. Yeah. Uh so 40 McNuggets, 12.99. Okay. Six so piece spicy McNuggets? Dude, they have spicy nuggets. No. It's on my spicy app. nuggets are back? This we is got, breaking. We, wait. We gotta go. Wait, are you kidding me? I, it's on my app. Dude, we gotta wrap this episode up. <laughs> get get uh DoorDash on the car, dude. This is real? Wait. I, it's on my app. I don't know. I don't know. Wait. Wait, this is huge. Not for me. Not for me. What does that mean? You know what it means. You're a fucking piece of shit. Next question. (laughs) Follow up. Will you ever do another listener's stories? I have a couple in the pipe that I'd love to share. Those are our worst episodes of all time. So absolutely not. (laughs) Those are our two lowest episodes across the board. Is that true? Sorry about that, Radical so no. Corpse. Uh, but you can Q&A us some. Favorite underrated fast food chain? I, I do have one that I feel like is rarely talked about. We've kind of talked about it, but Steak and Shake, pretty fucking good. It is underrated. Underrated. It's kind of accelerated cuisine. But, dude, also, Noodles and Company. Yeah. I, that's, ex- that's accelerated cuisine. That's accelerated cuisine for sure. I love Noodles and Company. Uh, to me... Because you, when, you, when you think fast food, right, yeah, you go try. McDonald's, Taco Bell, yeah. Burger King, Wendy's. Wendy's That's yeah. where your mind goes. Mm-hmm. Popeye's is <sighs> fucking elite, dude. And it needs I, to be in the conversation. We need to have this. Com- what, is that? what do the people, those fucking idiots say on Twitter and stuff? <laughs> You're like, not ready for this conversation. Yeah, we're not ready for this conversation. That Popeye's is underrated, even though you know people put respect on it. Yeah. It needs more respect. Um, Popeye's is incredible. Mm-hmm. There are two near me, and they're in the worst possible locations. That, yeah. Just, you no, have no, to. No, no, not not even it. like neighborhood wise, but just like to get to. They're just like on the corner of the busiest streets. Like you can't. It is literally, I think there's one on Satikoy and Sepulveda, which is mm-hmm. Sherman Way and Sepulveda. It's one, it's one block away. Sherman Way and Sepulveda is like the. Traffic wise, the most dangerous intersection in Los Angeles, California. <laughs> and the Popeyes is one block away. Pretty There's funny. one across the street from the uh, Pro Wrestling Tees store. Oh. It's Very on nice. my street, actually. Um, you, that's an excellent answer. It's on Popeyes right. is fucking it shouldn't great. Be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Favorite moment The haunt lower where for the entire episode, Colin would get to a new area and say, you think anyone has ever spin kicked here and then do a spin kick? And that was his favorite. Too. Yeah. Time? That was a favorite moment. Me too. Me too. Let's see. I don't recall ever hearing you guys talk about Freddy's, the burger place with the red lettering and the white. Never been. Also curious if you ever tried. Um, also curious if you ever tried Illegal Pete's because they hook up touring mans. I have. It's at uh, Grand Junction in Colorado. It's like a Chipotle kind of Moe's kind of place, but if you're on tour and can prove it, they give you food. So respect to them. Yeah, I like that. I like anybody um, that does that. I will abuse that system happily. Will we be getting any more segments for the show? Weekly coverage of new releases in the scene? Have thought mm. about that. Yeah. Instrument playthroughs or lessons? No. Track breakdowns know. where you have an artist go over recording process and fun facts about the songs? Possibly. That's some hard lore. It's pretty cool. Yeah. But I'd want to do that in person. I'd want to make sure that was... Yeah, and we would need like you know, a tailor. We Multiple. would need like yeah, an engineer yeah, yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, what medical band? What metal core medical metal core bands do you guys actually like? Define okay. Now I want you to because I saw my buddy Zach Nelson, mm-hmm. 185 miles south podcast. Check him out. Ask what is metalcore. By all intents and purposes, and definitively and objectively, Marauder is a metal core band. That right? is me- like Marauder and All Out War. And All Out War. Like Ring that's metal core. Metallic. Yep. 
Hard core. Work. Yeah. I don't know what this other stuff is. It's got it's a, that should have its own name, but I guess me, it's just easier to call it metalcore. It's classic metalcore versus modern metal. Totally. Kinda, but know? like, if that means we get to claim Marauder and All of War as hardcore bands, then so be it. Fine by me. Fine. Brother. Yeah. Fine. Um, uh, but if we're talking that the the kind of um, colloquial use of the word, mm -hmm. I like like dead to fall. <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, disembodied is is that and. I feel they like, get like the you know what? Pass, don't they? You know what? What? Bo? What's that? The blueprint mm. for what these metalcore bands are doing is Caven. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Caven is the best metal like of that. If that's yeah. what we're calling a metalcore band, it starts and ends at Caven. To me. Skinny jeans. One guy's wearing skinny jeans with flip flops. One the fucking little carabiner is dangling with his keys off and the tour laminate on it. Yeah. slamming so hard against his fucking All belt yeah his canvas belt <laughs> uh that cave in they did it that's yeah. the real shit man yeah 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 um it, oh this is this is excellent hit me for both of us if you guys had to move cities where would you go you can't go in california how about we both say nowhere in California? Because it's almost too obvious. It's so easy, yeah. Uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Really? You'd yeah. go to the cold. Yeah. You know why? Why? Because I have an Arcteryx Beta insulated <laughs> jacket. Wow. <laughs> Thanks, Bobby. Thanks, Bob. Friend of the show. Um. I'd go to Southern Colorado. It's kind of shittier, so it's cheaper to live there, and the weather is less bad. The weather is less bad? Dude, fucking Denver gets more sunshine than Chicago. It's insane. Oh, my God. That's where you choose in the whole country? Yeah, I, I really like it there. Legitimately. No diss to Colorado. Everybody like, I know from Colorado yeah, yeah, don't live in Colorado no more. Yeah, but they also don't <laughs> live in a place where it's fucking flat. And I you still get six months of snow. You don't like the flat? Yo, it snowed today. Did it really? Yes. It was 80 degrees on Friday. It snowed in Chicago today. That makes no sense. You know where I'm a big fan of? What's that? Pacific Northwest. Oh, I mean. Gorgeous. No problem. Oh, my Put God. Put me in Vancouver or fucking Seattle. Oh, Portland. I would live in Portland a heartbeat. I live in Portland, yeah. Yeah, that's big, easy. And sure. you know what? I love... My dad, my dad lives in Texas. Texas, yeah, yeah. I love visiting Texas, but maybe it's a visiting thing, you know? Yeah, because like that's the thing, right? It's like I love. How long over. until I have to kill a racist guy? Yeah. You know, point three minutes longer than you normally say. It's like yeah, exactly. Um, I love Vegas. I don't think I could live in Vegas. Oh, dude, Reno, Sierra Nevada, up oh, there. Reno's, Reno is actually Reno's amazing. Awesome, because it's like two and a half hours from San Francisco. Yeah, no, I mean, Reno Reno came up in a big way in the last, like, decade or so. Yeah, yeah. It is, it is like, it's mini Portland. I could live in Reno, for With sure. Scenes. I actually think I could. Yeah. I would give it, I'd be open to it, put it that way. Me too. Lana, if you're listening, I'm lying. <laughs> <laughs> Just making Bo happy. Don't, don't, don't quote me. Um, similar to the fast food question, you're driving down the highway and need to stop for gas. You stop at the holy grail of gas stations that has literally every snack or drink you can think of. What are you grabbing before you get him back in the van? That's it. We did That's this already. That's crazy. A, the it's synergy. The high. It's an amazing question, it's but I beat question. you to it, and the answer is hot and spicy cheeses. And what do you get to drink? Ooh, it's a magical one, right? It's a magical one. They got everything. The Wawa half and half iced tea lemonade <laughs> diet. The Arnold Palmy. Oh, oh my. my. God, the God. diet one is so good. Oh. There's no reason being that good. It's it's one of the greatest beverages on the planet. <laughs> Specifically. True uh, nectar. Uh, what are the worst times where you guys felt like giving up on music? You've talked about this. Oh, come on, now. dude. Yeah. Oct November 1st, 2015. <laughs> <laughs> the day after Disharmony came out. You know the, the Twitter thread that keeps going up where it's like, what's the biggest uh, I, I'm not him yeah. moment in history? 
I was gonna respond with just the album art of disharmony, but I didn't want to make it about me, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that was, dude, disharmony, damn near killed me. I'm not joking. <laughs> Uh, that was it where i was like this is the last music i'm ever making Mm. you know that was it and then it wasn't and then it wasn't thankfully yeah Yeah. i got like two or three more records in me probably you got more (sighs) we'll see (laughs) yeah we gotta do this allison chains band you got it (laughs) what's Uh, uh, favorite elder what about you oh um Giving up on music? November 1st, 2015. <laughs> <laughs> um, almost, you know, it's never a... Um, uh, we've been fortunate, I think, as a band to not have put anything out where it's like... Fuck this. Fuck, yeah. So it's not been that or like a tour. We've been fucking brutalized with like crime and stuff. Yeah. When, uh, when we had our trailer stolen in... Vegas, yeah. James and I were the first two walking out, and we were walking to the van together um, at the Luxor, and the, where where the oversized parking lot was, you had to walk through a parking garage, and then it's just a big parking lot, and there's not it's it's a desert mm-hmm. and a parking lot, so there's like a a tree you know six inches thick, and we're <laughs> both walking, and we're both just like man, trailer must be behind that tree, huh? Kind of a thing, like we were just in complete denial until we got two. 10 feet of the van realized what happened. And there was a very real moment where I was like, I'm done with this. I'm going to fly home. Yeah. I'm like the band's done. I'm never coming back. Like, yeah, I'm not doing this anymore. This is insane. So (laughs) a little, little different, but I was ready to be done. Uh, This one's for you. Favorite Elden ring build. A spell sword. Come on. Next. (laughs) Easy. Start with a prisoner. Go from there. Uh, Sanity asked me if I ever painted, if I ever painted over the green room in this room. I did with more green. Darker green. It's a much nicer green. Well, Jordan Olds of Two Minutes yeah. to Late Night did yeah. his in like this gorgeous, I can show gorgeous you. forest green. This is what my room looks like. If yeah, that's not to. bad. No, it's very pleasant, actually. Because before only it was because the lights. It was so punishing. I felt yeah. I felt like you were going crazy in the lime room. I was. You still yeah. are, but in a different way. Am. You look. Let me tell you something. Hmm. I put on episode one the other day just for fun, just for shits. Just to do it. You look like you've lost 15, 20 pounds probably. Thank you. Is that true, you think? Um, No. It's, it's like metrically provably not true oh. but um you're doing something different i'm doing something and it's different. I, I, I mean I, until lana gifted me with those wonderful cupcakes mm-hmm. for our one year anniversary she's, very good. she's a good person um i i wasn't eating any carbs mm-hmm. and i've just you know even even in in the last like month or so since i got fired i've been like really <laughs> being careful you know good what else are you gonna um, do you know yeah the closest brush in with the law, police, or TSA on tour? Uh, <laughs> this is classic. Um, mm. I think I told this in the Justice episode, mm. but uh, on my very first European tour, this is probably not my closest one, but this is the most podcast-friendly one. Half the tour bought these like industrial-strength green laser pointers. And we were just pointing them at planes and people. <laughs> like instant, like we were just walking back to the hotel, like la 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 la, yeah. and thinking like, damn, you can see it on the plane. That's crazy. And oh. poli- cops rolled up like 30 seconds later. No way. And in English, because they knew, said, okay, who has the lasers? <laughs> Confiscated every laser. Yeah. At these, this laser cost me like 40 euro, dude. Oh, in 2010. And it was like $65. I had about 60 euro for the yeah. tour, you yeah. know? But I was like, this laser's so cool, I have to get it. Um, That was a good one. They didn't arrest anybody or anything, mm-hmm. but 
But I'm I'm pretty crushed to this day about the loss of my industrial strength green <laughs> laser pointer that I got in Italy or Germany or wherever the fuck I was. We landed in Japan and they were going through all of our bags after we landed. Sometimes they'll do that. Mm-hmm. They found <laughs> James workout bag with chalk in it. Mm. And the dude he didn't speak any English. The Japanese, you know, border patrol guy, whatever customs guy for real one oh, 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 and like thought it was like a brick of coke oh yeah yeah and james and i had to be like no no and I, I like i grabbed james arm i was like he's he's you know and they were like oh and like did a little test strip or whatever damn and we're we're good boys we don't really we're do very it. good boys yeah. uh running with the law yeah i don't know i don't know either Worst injury on tour? You've been sick. You ever been injured? Injured. Uh, <laughs> I had a crazy allergic reaction to a cat one time. <laughs> and my face swelled up twice the size. Just, I'm telling you, Brody King, Anthony, they can all attest. This was on a tour with God's Hate and King 9. Yeah. My face was double the size. Oh, my God. And it looked like a completely different person. I don't think a single photo exists. That's it. But it was like, I've How's never, that? it was crazy. How's that possible? That I don't no know. One took a picture. Yeah. No, I think they're out there. But if they, if guys, if you have them, please send them. <laughs> this um, is, these are two great questions. Okay. When are we getting a twitching tongue show? And does Colin have a problem with gambling? <laughs> Next <laughs> question. What are your Wawa orders? Oh, the gobbler. What's the, go- oh, is that the turkey thing? Yeah. Yeah. The gobbler with two Arnold Palmer's diet. I love the, a meatball Sammy loaded up with like provolone. Dude. I mean that the, so bef- when it's not gobbler season, I'm yeah. getting the pepperoni pizza sandwich. Yeah. 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 There you go. There so you go. good. You put and it's very on, similar to the meatball. You put marinara on any meat and I'm like down. I don't, I don't really need anything else. Put a little uh, ranch also, on there. the Colin Deftones bit where he did an impression of the singer on the pod literally made me go into a wheezing fit at work. <laughs> I think about it weekly and still uh, laughing. Mm-hmm. You want to uh, give some more? Um, I watched you change. That sounded. Thank you. That was good. <laughs> uh, here, this is okay. Let's not let's not shit on uh, this person. They probably just assume that everyone's into it, but favorite black metal and grindcore records. For uh, extreme conditions, demand extreme responses. That's what it's Great. called. That's I like my ASIC. One. I like Carcass. Yeah, yeah. That's about it. Black metal, I don't really give a fuck. No, black metal is not good. I'll tell you what I like: Demu Borgir, brother. That's that's I like the a, best I, black metal man. I like Immortal, but I like. Mm-hmm immortal when it stopped being just black metal like sons of northern darkness is where it's kind of more Mm -hmm. a little more technical question for colin the internet reaction to your songs in AEW have obviously been great yeah anyone like tony or the others reach out to you about their reactions would be sick if you eventually do a song for a pay-per-view like tony khan (laughs) yeah the billionaire (laughs) no nobody's reaching out to me Uh, it's very um cellular is what I've gathered. Like you're just kind of operating and link up with someone who uses it. That's it's up. It's, it's up to the, like, I can tell you with the buddy one, buddy using I suggest was like, Hey, we didn't figure anything out. You have a big match tomorrow. Do you want to use this? Wow. It was basically it. And he was like, yeah, it might. And it's sick. So, and then, so it was like, okay, if you like it, we'll do, we'll push this part here. We'll do this part here. And then I'll do a little voiceover. What do you want me to say? Say this. Okay. Does this sound good? Yes. Okay. Eight hours later, it's on TV. Um, and like the, the Kings of the black throne one for, for Brody and Tom. Yeah. Big Tom obviously was like, that was the first one. That was the starter. There was no plans for it to be on TV or anything. Uh, they were a little more warmer with me when we were doing that one because it was like the first one and it was their first time working with me, you know? Yeah. Like excited to have a new guy as part yeah, of like yeah. the... Yeah. And I think once <laughs> once I did another one, they were just like, all right, this fucking guy again. 
No, what he talks. Um, <laughs> but you know, the wrestlers want the if the I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it forever as long as right. The, and the boys we, are. There's a house guy. Yeah, you're not. You're not trying to step on toes. I don't want. I'm not. No. He ha, he's paid full time to do that. Yeah, you know. It's and it, I like obviously, I can't do what he does mm. straight up. Like like the Jamie Hader song, I don't I couldn't write that. Um, I couldn't do it. I could not do that. But I think you know, there's obvi- there's gonna be situations where like there's a right man for the job. Yeah. And when somebody wants like a hard, an at, like a straight up hard song, I feel I've proven at this point. Then I'm the man for the job. Uh, but no, is, but 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 the the boys the the locker room is the is the most rece- receptive and 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 excited and cool about it. So that's been cool. Favorite air drum along band while listening to or watching live? King Diamond. King Diamond. Oh, watching live? Yeah, it says it's listening Arms to way or, King Nine. It's true. You do you do be air drumming. I know every one of them. Th- Fucking things that he's about to do. <laughs> Even the live ones. Even the live. I know the live. Get through the cats. Get through the cats. I know that one. That is uh, Mills. Uh, and then the there. breeding grounds when he switches to the crash live. Yeah. I know all of them. <laughs> King Nine. Uh, but l- recorded. Mm. Biohazard King Nine. I think for me. It would probably be like again. I think I can do it, but I can't. I'm not much of a drummer at all. But like Ghost is very fun to air drum too. Yo, the guy, the first guy they had, uh, inc- the open handed guy, the open handed guy who never stopped counting with the left foot. Oh, really? Is he always? He's a fucking beast. Yeah, he's awesome. He, that hi hat foot never right. stops. All his fills were so wristy too. Very <laughs> wristy, but it's like if you subtract that left foot. For me, it's like, oh, this is child's play, you know? But the fact that that thing never stopped. Really? Is crazy. To me, like, as somebody who started playing drums with double kick. Yeah. The hi-hat, the, whoever, any drummer out there that can do the hi-hat foot never stopping. Is I that like the flex? I think they're amazing. Really? I think it's like, with drumming, I think that's a normal thing that you learn yeah. in, like, drumming basic fundamentals. But I, I was self-taught. I didn't know how to do that. Yeah. So normal shit like that blows my mind i love that that's fun yeah that's fun uh what city has the best barbecue and why is it memphis it's not it's not but memphis. it's very good in memphis central barbecue uh, is awesome no no problem yo st louis has some unbelievable barbecue. st louis has great barbecue i had a place called bama's yesterday in rural michigan mm. that was uh st louis style and it was fucking See? great yo san antonio i've had some of the best barbecue in my life of course because they have the best of everything. Because they're the best. Um, um, Austin, I don't say many good things about Austin. Austin does have good food. Yeah, I've had. I think it was called Iron Barbecue in Austin, and it was like, you ever get beef ribs? The yeah. big fucker. Oh. I don't prefer them, but yeah, they're less flavorful. But if the sauce is rocking, yeah. How do you feel about a hot link? Love a hot link. What's your favorite barbecue like? Accoutrement. Like if I'm picking an order. Oh, I mean, brisket is my number one. Yeah, same. Barbecue brisket item. is like my I'll thing. Make a little, like a Martin's potato roll brisket sandwich. Mm. A hot link. I'm not a pulled pork guy. I, I like pulled pork, but I'll go brisket ev- like 10 Every out. time. Yeah, every time. And that's I'm not I a had big it, th- pork guy. It depends. Yeah, I can see that. Dude, we got burnt end like nacho fries. And then I got a brisket quesadilla. That sounds good. Outstanding. Sounds uh, good. What do you guys think about hardcore heavy bands doing covers of non-hardcore artists like Bane, Fleshwater, covering Bjork? It sounds interesting for you guys as musicians. I wish yeah. I could do it and not feel as though it compromised the band. One of the one of the very first like I, okay, one of the very first things I ever heard when I was downloading music as like a 13 year old was h2o covering mm. like a player i thought you were gonna say throw down baby got back and, and that surely Yo, that uh, changed shit. surely <laughs> i remember that 
Yeah. So it was just like, to me, it's just always like a gimmick. Like it's mm. always like kind of just like a, Hah! and then like the newfound glory thing, you know, just like, yeah, they've done like full albums. of it. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think just it don't can think be done. Right. It can be done. Right. But like Fleshwater doesn't count because Fleshwater is like, not music, only like a music a band. band. Um, actual musicians, yeah. actual musicians. Yeah. Um, and you got like t- twitching tongues covering flute like, gold dust woman, you know, it's like, yeah, that was sick. You can do that. That was that was a complete like last. This harmony was recorded. Yeah, um, drums were wrapped and everything. And then at like midnight, Taylor and I were just talking in the living room. We were like, "Yo, be, would it be fucking sick if we recorded that?" And it was gonna be like a just like a B side on the on the album. Yeah. Uh, and it was like, just fire up the stuff. Let's just rec- at least record the drums. So I played drums on that. And just listened to the original. He made a little count in for me. Yeah. And I just played to the Fleetwood Mac song. So it's like the same, it would be the same BPM as whatever theirs was. Yeah. Because it was just listening to it like, okay, we're going to do this. It was cool. And it was uh, just like complete, like record was done. Oh, well, let's add this. That's fun. Yeah, it was sick. No pressure then, you know, no, just not. fun. You know what? One of the best heavy covers of a non-heavy song is. Crowbar, no quarter. Uh, crowbar, fucking. What's the song called? Dream, <laughs> Dreamweaver, dude. Which one? Dreamweaver. Oh, dude, that one's amazing. Oh my god! But n- that no quarter is on my favorite. It's my favorite song on my favorite Zeppelin record. So when I heard oh. them do it, it was just like, oh, oh shit, yeah. you know. So the Dreamweaver one for me because of Wayne's World. Yeah. Was like, that was a full, a real full circle thing. She's a babe. Yeah. Um, Type, typo did a lot of. Typo did a lot. And dude, like, and what's funny is like, Cinnamon Girl is incredible. Yeah. Fucking Hey Pete. Dude, Hey Pete is crazy. I'm going to take that D train. <laughs> Brighton to Brighton Beach. Beach. Fantastic. Yeah, um, I love. If, if somebody can do it, it's great, but I just, yeah. like... I'm fully I down. I can't imagine Harm's Way covering I, a non-heavy no, song. No, no, no. You know what I mean? It just depends. It's there's, a case there, it's, it, there's, it is a band-by-band basis, you know? Mm-hmm. What you got Definitely. there? Um, <laughs> God damn it. Favorite Coheed and Cambria song? Song? Yeah. Guess we know who's teacher's pet, Big Easy. <laughs> uh, song. I think it might be in Keeping Secrets. The fucking whoa section? Oh, my God. <laughs> I would love some closure on the big did Bo ever score with the Whole Foods fish debacle. No. It, it just never would have worked between us. We were two very different people. He's moved on. He's got, grew, he's, he's got help apart. since the show. We grew apart. I told him he couldn't be fucking fish well. One of, the, one of these days it would jeopardize the show. You know? <laughs> <laughs> my my fish skeletons would come back to haunt. They'd come out, dude. Uh, was, favorite dude. Mario Universe character from any Mario Nintendo game. Now we're talking. That's fun. Okay. I mean, objectively, it's Luigi. <laughs> he's. I mean, I'm a big funniest. Yoshi guy. Big Yoshi, Yoshi rocks, guy. but does he have the chops, the com- the comedic chops that Luigi has? No, I mean, no. Did you the see the fall? movie? Dude, did you see the movie? I haven't seen it yet, no. No. I only saw oh the God. Renfield movie that you apparently hated. Dude, it is unbelievable. I'm telling you, I'm, it's, I, it is perfect. <laughs> it's I will crazy. See it. Did you it, see it, John Wick four? Yeah, I loved it. Okay. I don't want to. I don't want to engage with you on that yeah, debate yeah. on the show. I don't want to get you. There's in no debate. There's no debate. Yeah, I just wasn't. Just, I, just stop. Right. Just stop. Um, Before you get so in who, trouble. You, <laughs> who would you pick? Uh, maybe Bowser Jr. I love Bowser Jr. That's fun. Yeah, that's a good one. Uh, I never pick him in anything. Smash Bros., Mario Kart, anything. But I think it's Luigi for me. He's just I love funny. Luigi. Well, He's here's hilarious. the thing: if I'm if I'm picking in a Mario game, yeah, as a playable character, yeah, the answer is Peach, because she could do the little flutter fly thing, Boy, so you can jump longer. Oh yeah. Mario Peach 2. is the best playable character. Mario 2? You get everywhere in that <laughs> bitch. <'cause> she... <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. Peach is the best playable character. That's scientific. Uh, I won't. I, I will debate any of you because Zelda fucking sucks and Mario is God. Okay. No, 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 no. Do you guys think that bands like Weapon X, World of Pleasure, and Point of Contact are the new way to approach straight edge in 2023? There's nothing new about it. Does the minority unit slash no tolerance straight edge era doesn't fit with the heavy music era of hardcore? I'm confused with, with what the question is. Yeah, I don't like the like musically. Maybe I don't know. I don't. I'm sorry I that know. I don't understand. I don't the think that there's anything really new about Weapon X, World of Pleasure, or Point of Contact. Personally, like hard music with hard lyrics, yeah, hard straight like, lyrics. That's that's a wonderful. That's no, a tale lyric. as old as time, but it's yeah. like I'm I'm glad that it's still yes that it's that it is still that way. That they're, they're keeping hard straight edge bands alive, where the norm would be something more like. A no tolerance, a, f- a floor punch, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, that's that's like tried and true straight edge 101. Yeah. It's, I mean, those are, no tolerance floor punch are in, like, the annals of history as, yes. like, all-time best straight edge bands. Um, so, I li- you know, I like when it is different. Definitely. And when it's the same, <laughs> frankly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do the Hard- same thing. Just say different, harder stuff. I'm just down. Just don't make it melodic. <laughs> just don't make it melodic. Melodic, straight edge hardcore. I'd rat is- you'd have to sell me. <laughs> How bad does your neck hurt after Colin cranked down it? Not at all. I'm bigger, faster, stronger. Well, what I'm also, I'm a great, I'm Bret Hart. Oh, yeah, come he, on. He, he protected me. I'm very gentle. He protected me on that uh, sidewalk. What is the master killer of rap music? We don't we don't know. I don't know. I don't know. We don't know. To me, it's Onyx back to fuck up, but I know I'm wrong. <laughs> you know? I'll we'll tell you what the master killer of R and B music is. Oh, please do. It's Boys to Men Cooley High Harmony. <laughs> People think I'm joking with this. I, I used to wear Boys to Men shirts from Twitching Tongues played all the time. I love Boys to Men. They're talented men. Uh, talented who, men? Who were boys. They're maybe the greatest harmonizers in the history of music. Yeah, I mean, hey, you know me. BG's oh. boys to men. Love that's, me that's, a harmony. Well, you, I love me a coolie high harmony, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> Will the vocalists in many hard lores eventually get their full episodes, like Vogel, Matthew Honeycutt, and Joseph? Yeah. One thousand. Yeah. These are just little tastes, little appetizers. This is a know? garnish, yeah. A fast song. Hold on. L- allow me to read this how it's written. Oh, Please. you know what? His name this is the same thing as the Weapon X thing. He's got Brazilian in the name. Oh, so okay. maybe yeah. English not the first language. So I'll be mo- very nice. Be nice. A fast song can be hard. Yes. Or heavier than a heavy song like Infest. That's what it was written. I think they're trying to say, is it better to have a fast song that's hard or a heavy song that's hard, hard? <laughs> i don't know i don't know i don't know what the question um is. i think it all depends on the intention and the execution you know like i think i think some bands use fast parts as a crush as a Who's crush. the hardest fast band the hardest fast band like who's a band that has a puka, 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 puka beat but you're just like Ugh. piece by piece yeah yeah, that's a really good answer. Piece by piece could do a song with no mosh part, just going it, the whole yeah. time, and it's the hardest song ever. Okay. Because of the intention behind it and the lyrics. Good answer. True answer. It's a fact. Yeah. It's the only answer. <laughs> Favorite moments three way tie. Okay. The great fast food debate. The Chris oh the Christmas special. The Christmas special was fun. <sighs> near and near I was so tired. No. I know. You I will so never tired. forget how tired I was in the Christmas special. This motherfucker was falling asleep. It was crazy. We, we had Krispy Kreme. Colin ordered. <laughs> Colin got Krispy Kreme, and then Colin's wife accidentally also ordered Krispy Kreme. So Yo, that had- happened again like a month ago. <laughs> we both ordered Krispy Kreme. Just dozens of it's donuts. A, it's a problem. It's a problem. Uh, greatest accomplishment uh, uh, <clears throat> to me. Greatest accomplishment to happen to the show. And do you think Hardlore will ever have a Hardlore exclusive Discord? Moot or gathering? Yeah. What the fuck? Uh, what the hell does that? What the hell does that? What the? Uh, King's moot, like a meeting. So like, 
I say, was born in 1991. Mo. So say there's <laughs> say we go to uh, something like Sound of Fury. This is hardcore. Uh-huh. Will we ever have like a hey, come get a pick moment or something? Huh. I would say I could I could see that happening. Just um, find just find us anywhere. Yeah, yeah. You know we don't need to make it a thing. Whatever you want. I don't need to. You don't need to stand in a line. Let's see. Too many fave moments. Well, this was Colin explaining how his appendix burst. Shout the out to war. our mutual friend Tay Su who just went through that as well. Gangster, Taylor, Tay Su of Gangster. Rumble fame. Yeah, and many many millions of shows. Let's do some ads real quick. Today's sponsor for the very first time, Athletic Greens. We're here to tell you about AG1. Bo, how are you feeling about AG1? I feel really good about AG1. Um, as we like to do with anything else we're working with, uh, they reach out to us, sent us stuff, and we've been on it for, what, a couple weeks now? They heard about our, frankly, revolting diets <laughs> and the way we live our lives, and they knew, they literally just knew. They were like, hey, take these for a bit, and then we'll talk about sponsoring the show. Yeah. It was like they just was, knew guys, we were going to drink it and be like, oh, this is this is what the game been missing, frankly. <laughs> this is what I'm supposed to feel like. Um, it is It is a daily nutritional supplement basically it's one little scoop of this powder that you cut with water into this gorgeous bottle frankly with this the heaviest beautiful <laughs> the heaviest lid known to man colin's chugging he's heading it um, i'm chugging great, it i'm a picky guy yeah that's true and it's i don't it's need very, a lot of vegetables it's and very i easy i like it if you're on the road if you travel um, they have these packets. These are the five packets that you'll get if you use our code, and then for free, for free, and then you get a life or a year <laughs> lifetime, a year supply of the vitamin D drops, as well. It's just one drop, just by using code Hardlore. So if you are looking for an easier way to take supplements, Athletic Greens is giving you a free one year supply of vitamin D and five free travel po- packs with your first purchase. Uh, go to athleticgreens.com/hardlore. That is athleticgreens.com slash hard lore. So thank you, Athletic Greens, for sponsoring the show and for honestly making us physically feel better in order to make the show a little bit more sustainable <laughs> with our terrible, terrible diets. I'm taking it everywhere we go. I, I have not left the house without it. Yeah, frankly. that's a shoot. I, I, yeah, yeah, that's same. a real thing. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it's also Manscaped time. You know we all got, about Manscaped, baby. We got a special Manscaped. Oh, this, you got that one? This month. Yeah, this is the testicular cancer awareness special edition. Wow. Lawnmower 4.0. Purple, uh, my favorite color. Uh, April April is uh, testicular cancer awareness month, and uh, Manscaped is raising money, raising awareness for testicular cancer. Hashtag How do you know if you have testicular cancer? Bumps. If you got a bump on your dick, and all, or uh, not on your dick, <laughs> on your ball, mm-hmm. Um, if it's smooth, it's typically okay. You still want to get it checked out. Yeah. If it's jagged or asymmetrical or kind of doesn't feel right, you definitely right. want to get that checked out. That's usually indicative of a problem. Noted. And um, without naming names, there are two f- mutual friends of ours who were working together once. One threw a tennis ball at the other and nailed him right in the nut uh-huh. and caused a cyst. You can do. You can cause them. Oh yeah, trauma. You can give somebody cancer. No, no, no. It was a, it was a growth oh. as a reaction to trauma. It wasn't cancerous. It was just a cyst. Manscaped. Manscaped. <laughs> Manscaped. Hard Use lore. code Hardlore twenty percent off free shipping. Manscaped has been very cool. You know where I stand, man. This is the greatest product in the world. And look that how one beautiful the, this shot dude, is. That was one of the best focuses. Can you believe this? <laughs> I don't even want to move because this looks so incredible. <laughs> it's the rest of the episode. Oh, my God. Uh, but, yeah, Manscaped, they've been really cool. It's testicular cancer enough. Hashtag, we save balls. So check them out. It's what not time. It's, we're coming up, man. Next Friday is the I, second ever Hard Lore Whatnot. For those of you who watched our first one who bought anything, thank you guys so much. That was awesome. Yeah. It was very helpful. I was recently fired. So Yes. But... <laughs> <laughs> I got oodles of stuff now, all kinds of sizes. Yeah. I got a bunch of convicted uh, records. Mm. I got a ton of convicted shirts, tons of old harm's way shirts, large, mediums, smalls. 
I even got well, some guess what I, I just gotta... did, Bo? What? I just put in an order for black comfort colors, hard lord polar bear shirts. Uh oh. <laughs> so there will be 72 of those <laughs> available <laughs> next Friday. Please buy every single All one. Of them. I mean, 72. There's 20,000 people listening to the show a week at this point, you know? So somebody's got to buy it. Minimum. So we can sell 72 of them motherfuckers, right? Yeah. Uh, so uh, yeah. What, what, do they, what do they get if they use our code when they sign up for whatnot? You get $15 off your first purchase, right? It's something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get money off your first purchase. Yeah. It helps us out. It does. And uh, so you can use that during our show. So that's 15 bucks you don't have to spend when exactly. bidding on one of our things. And as anybody that was part of the first show can tell you, it's basically the closest thing you will get currently to a live Hard Lore episode. Exactly. It looks exactly like this. It looks just like this. And we we wing it much oh, like yeah. these ads. Yeah. We really wing it. Let's get back to the episode. All right. And we're back. <laughs> we're, we're so <laughs> professional. I know. Give me another question. Stuck on a desert island. All you have is a post black album Metallica release and an infinite amount of one chip flavors. What is your pick? <laughs> That's a great question. You know what I picked, though? I bet you know damn well what I picked. I do. Yep. A gun to my fucking head. I'm going to say s and Oh, that counts? Why not? He said oh, release. Easy. Yeah. Gun, off head, <laughs> S&M, <laughs> fired up. Yeah. One chip flavor? Yeah, no, that's tougher. Man. Well, okay, it does say chip flavor, chip. so that yeah. not necessarily... Because, like, sun chip, that's not a chip flavor, you know? I'm just thinking, like, I'm going to get sick of nacho cheese Dorito. I'm going to get sick of Cool Ranch Dorito. I'm going to get sick of the sour cream and onion lays. So I might have to go the sweet Maui onion. Oh, the one, the the weird one of them, the purple bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Or the kettle salt and black pepper one. Dude, say that again. I sneezed. The kettle brand salt and, of course, black pepper. That one's really good. That one is like kind of spicy with spicy. just being black powder. Yeah, yeah that's true. Like black pepper. Uh, for me, it's Cape Cod. Mm. Salt and vinegar. Salt and vinegar for the rest of your life? I, I Vinegar is my favorite like flavor of, of barbecue. Shit, of your sauces. mouth is built diff. Diff, baby. Mine, if I eat, if I eat a, a serving... Of salt and vinegar chips, I have a, I have a canker army grown. Oh yeah, no, I don't get none of that. You don't get canker sores, never. Wow, you're blessed in different ways. Built uh, <laughs> when are we getting <laughs> the up. Colin Young workout plan? There are two things that I think you should do, oh, and th- this is this is my suggestion for you as a venture on your own to make money. In addition, <laughs> uh huh. Have people do a Colin Young fucking Patreon and have people pay for your shit, whatever. For what? To work out? F- Dude, you have provable, noticeable, photographed change. It's just like writing. Dude, but riffs. I'm all getting that from a guy on YouTube. You know? So that's every I'll riff send you you've to ever him. every riff you've ever written is the same thing. We talk about it all the time. There's nothing new under the sun. But what you're doing is working. Relax. Shut up. Okay. Also, those are all new. <laughs> this is not and this is scott home and fitness kid <laughs> and uh you're you you need to figure out some kind of t-shirt sleeve cutting i'm cord. working on a template don't worry yeah yeah, yeah. i'm Good. working on that i that cut this one done. today oh Could really you tell you're you're okay you cut Perfect. yours a little too close to the neck for me because i don't yeah. want that much of my titty out but that's but, preference you know but that's what i'm saying you're very consistent in how yeah. you cut yours so that's that's good i can t- I don't have any shirts down here. You're not getting it. You, I'll show you on the whatnot live next Friday. Mm. Um, Dude, make an option for one of the shirts you sell to be. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's fun. That's good. Would you rather never be able to listen to Master Killer ever again or still be able to listen to Master Killer, but you have to listen to St. Anger and Full through headphones every day for the rest of your life? Oh, I'll never listen to Master Killer ever again because I got it in my head. Yeah, that's true. I got that record. I, I could play it. Master Killer. I could play it on every. Instrument. I could re-record it right now <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and be able to do it again. I couldn't play the drums. I could program it, but I could do it. Yeah, 
And uh, St. Anger is fucking long, brother. It's crazy. It's so long, and it's... It, like, even as a bit now, at this point, it's like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It could be 20 minutes shorter oh across the board. Yeah. Well, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Well, this episode's as good as done, so <sighs> might as well save it. Just keep going. Yeah. Will there be a hard lore tour, musically or comedy? You already know the answer to that. Yes. It's a big... Very soon. Here in Mexico City, Little Caesars is huge. Probably the second or most third or third most popular fast food brand. What are your thoughts on Little Caesars? You know, I think Little Caesars has just been ruined for us because of economic factors and, and have having toured so much. But like if that wasn't the case, it's a great value, dude. Uh, it's, like the crazy bread, I'll die for it. Okay. I got you. That that really saved my life for a few years there. The crazy bread. But I, I hope to never eat Little Caesars again. Same. But you can appreciate the I value. mean, the, the deal is it's it's the Costco hot dog, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like one of the greatest things a company has ever done. And, and like, done. Hey, we're so going to make a pizza that is available all the time for five fucking dollars. In any Kmart. In, yeah, uh, everywhere. So that's, yeah. that's badass. Yeah. Um, so I love that. Both are within 500 feet of each other. Which do you frequent more? McDonald's or In-N-Out? Um, I live. Wow. I live pretty close to both. If In-N-Out delivered, it would be different. But I got to go there to get it. You know, I probably eat McDonald's more. There's more variety, which yeah. often we say is like not good. The spice of life, kind of. Yeah, but kind of is, right. But it's variety from the most reliable source ever. So it's like the best source of food you know, ever made. Ever made. I'm biased because I don't get it as often. So I would pick In and Out. So you're actually a better answer. I do. I live like they are across from yeah. each other where I live. Um, I go. I order McDonald's more. I go to In and Out more. How far? That makes sense. For me. Yeah. McDonald's is much closer. But you, both are less than a mile. And you, you order. <laughs> Dude, the McDonald's I order from is truly like a, a hilarious distance to order from. <laughs> I go pick it up sometimes, but it's just <laughs> the time, you know? Mm. I, yeah. But like I said it in a couple weeks ago on the episode, I walked over, I walked there and dined in. How'd that feel? It was a dark day. <laughs> yeah. It was dark. Yeah. Dining in a McDonald's by yourself is really fucking dark. They yes. everybody's looking at you like, "What is going on in his life?" This, this man's having a midlife crisis. He just yeah, and I'm out. just wearing this, you yeah. know. So they're like, "What the fuck?" And like, my neighborhood is 99 percent Hispanic, mm-hmm. you know. So they're so, just like, so no matter where I go, it's like, "What is his problem?" Yeah, you know. And that's like, fine. That's, well, why does he have camel pants on? Who is he murdering? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. which is cool. That's fine. Um, what are your scene? Oh, this is fun. What are some of your favorite tattoos you've seen people get for your bands? Oh, wow. Um, we have a friend in Arizona, Connor, who has harm's way army, like in like the collegiate font, like on his leg It's pretty crazy. It's crazy. There was the guy from Arizona who got the twitching tongues demo cover with the head going. Whoa. The demo back cover on his head. Whoa. That's that's wild. That's up there. I've seen a few um, isolation rats in, like, the cloud, um, which is always cool. Um, I don't think I'm, I don't know if I've seen any post-human ones, but I could see it very easily. Because they're uh, currently human still. Oh, I got I got post-human right here. Oh, there you go. Um, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, that's about it. There's a lot, which is awesome. It's know? like one of the craziest things ever. Yeah, it's cool. Bunch the, of jagoffs decide on like a an idea and you get it tattooed on you. It's the crazy. samurai, the front facing samurai head, as seen on my Roland <laughs> kit here. Uh, the front facing one, Mark did as a tattoo on somebody first. Oh. Cool. And then he was like, hey, I had to do the front-facing one. On, well, like, it was our artwork, and he got a God's Hate tattoo and asked for it to be front-facing. 
Gotcha. So he kept the stencil so that he could finish it and give it to us as like a thing Great. to have. So that's pretty cool. Uh, uh, this is good. On tour, how often are you lobby dining versus crushing fast food in the van? Often lobby dining. Uh, pr- pretty much as often as possible. I love to lobby dine. Somebody just asked the part two of this question. Yeah. Please grace us with pro tips on how to maneuver the nugs or fries plus ketchup dipping sauce when you're eating in the van. And boy, do we have something for you soon that is going to seriously help that. That's all I can say for now. That's all, that's all we're legally allowed to say at this moment. But just so you know, soon your car is going to get a lot easier to eat in. And if there was... Thanks to hard lore. If there was any kind of branding on it, you might already be a fan, dare I say, friend of that branding. That's true. What is your least favorite song on Master Killer? How fucking dare you, sir? For I pissed a Taylor off really bad one time by calling the riff after the breakdown of Life is Pain silly. Yeah, that's crazy. He didn't like that. I don't. Um, I used to not get Besiege the Masses, the beginning. The I just didn't get you it. You are. Dislike. Okay. Dude, I didn't dislike no, no, I know, it. I, know. I just, just didn't I'm, get it. I know. Listen, listen. I'm going somewhere. I'm going Speak. somewhere with this. You ever watch one of them like WWE documentaries and they cut to Michael Hayes, right? Yeah. They cut to Michael Hayes in every single one of them about like, it'll be like about Stone Cold Steve Austin or The Rock or The Undertaker. It'll be about like everything that's ever worked, right? And it'll cut to Michael Hayes at one point going, I didn't think it was going to (laughs) work. You're Michael Hayes oh, a lot right. of the time. All right, thanks. But but you always come around, you know? I did. I, obviously, I came around. You always come around. I just didn't. I just didn't. And I, it's, it's fun for me now, knowing this part of you, mm-hmm. to see it happen in real time a lot of the time. Like, That's I'll show you something, and you'll be like, huh. Yeah. And then a week later, you'll be like, dude, that is sick. I've been listening to a lot of Dying Fetus. You're all in now, right? It, Reign Supreme is... It's it's perfect. It's quite literally perfect. How? This is a great question. <laughs> oh, the first. Uh, that comment Colin made along the lines of, if I'm not consuming at least three forms of media at any given moment, I want to kill myself, lives rent-free in my head because it's literally me. It's a, it's a problem for me. I sit at this computer. I watch yeah. YouTube. I play a video game, and I'm on TikTok. Often. Every day. Every yeah. single day. I'm I am driving to YouTube. You know? I'm not looking at the screen. Uh <laughs> mostly because now my my Bluetooth is a little bit delayed. Oh, annoying. It's a little bit delayed. The so new I car? The new car Bluetooth is a little that's bit delayed. That's annoying. That's disappointing. But I don't mind because that that's it, they they yeah. want to discourage you from using it. Do you think you that's know? why? Because obviously the I technology think it's, I think it's part of it. Like, Clever. they're there. You know, they, they're capable of doing that. Yeah, yeah. Clever. But, um, yeah, I'm the same. I'm like, I'll, I will be listening to music and listening to something else and playing a game and... A movie. And, like, editing the show. <laughs> um, <laughs> how many tums would you say you consume on average per week? I've never had uh, any kind of antacid or stomach settler ever in my life are you serious i've never once partaken that might be the craziest thing you've ever told (laughs) i've never had one and i never will you better knock cock brother i'll tell you that much right now i'm different dude i was fine and then in early high school i got obsessed with Arizona iced tea. Those tall boy cans, yeah, 72 it's... milligrams of sugar each. I'd have four a day. Because oh. I was an idiot, and I thought iced tea, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it has water. It's healthy. Yeah, right? And it's a dollar. Can't yeah, beat yeah. that. That's that's the real problem. Yeah, and then by the end of probably senior year, like the end of high school, I just started getting crazy carpet. I didn't even know what it was, so I started eating Tums, Tums, now the f- taste of Tums make me nauseous. So See, that's gross. the thing. I can't do a chalky Mm-mm. texture. So me, now I take ranch four- and creams to you, chalk to me. Gotcha. Okay. 
So those after dinner mints that like Greek and Italian places have, you hate mm-hmm. those. The, the like chalky mints. Oh, don't. I'm, I'm always going. I'm no, no, thank you. Your um, pe- peppermints. No, thank you. Mm. I carry um, my own mints now because it's like, I, no, I'm good. You know? Yeah. Um, so now I take 40 milligrams of famitidine every day. Mm. But you know what's interesting? If I don't eat carbs, if I do keto, don't eat it. Totally thing, gone. man. No heartburn. No it's indigestion. The thing. Something's wrong in there. Something's. Yeah, no, no times for me. Individually, what are your top three best slash funniest moments from the last year? Funniest. Uh, you what's, walking what are our hardest pole? laugh? Oh, you yeah. walking into the poll, like, I'll still put it on and it'll fuck me up. Okay. Um, someone on the Discord made you saying, hey, with the comforter on, uh-huh. and me getting surprised fucks me up. That was fun. That was us. I hope that there's bloopers from that because that was, like, the first time where we were, like, trying a scripted like, thing. Trying to act. Um, you doing the I never touch my dick I when never. I pee. <laughs> that laugh that you hear from me after that is so genuine. Um, that, that's probably the funniest, the single, like funniest, hardest laugh. (laughs) Oh, what, 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 there's something that made us, that got us real good. Oh, dude. Talking about memes with Dan Seeley, the N64 controller full full of beans beans and stuff. Yeah. That's good. It's, it's always, so (sighs) that's kind of the double edged sword is like, it's always the in-person shit. Cause you, yeah. get, you get the silly ha ha's and then you yeah. just, you know, we've had a couple. We've had a, uh, I mean, I love the last two hours have been. Oh, so easiest. <laughs> yeah, so just great. unbelievable. So there's, I, I'm not, I'm never like comparing, but it's just like when it, what comes to mind is like, dude, you, I'm not joking. You guys, when Colin walked into that poll, it was a full 180 <laughs> seconds of me laughing. It was a lot. It was three minutes of me like, <laughs> on, like on the laughing. cutting room floor. <laughs> yeah. Good God. Um, <clears throat> the idea of boat. Now this is, I really wish this was on camera. The I- Jesus Christ. The Instagram is insane. Uh, the idea of Bo taking off his Morpheus glasses and crushing them gets me every time. It's Did my Bo- only, sorry. No, it's okay. What'd you say? My only regret is that Sean wasn't filming. That you just did that to do it. Yeah. That, but that was a moment of pure passion. That was know? a real, I mean, there wasn't a bit. It was not that a was, bit. I'm I not re- going to, that was me saying, I'm not going to be called Morpheus on the show if we do something. You know what I mean? Which, of course, then we I was. But but it was me being like, I'm not going to like let this be a thing. <laughs> it's such a thing, though. <laughs> it is such a thing. Though. It's. That's my favorite part of the Christmas episode is where we're telling that story. And then I say, guys, and you're like, guys, guys. Yeah. And then I, I realized that I said it in the moment. I'm like, guys, fuck. Uh, I like that. And I liked telling the story to the Uber driver after, right after that happened. Yeah. And me being like, now, wouldn't you say Morpheus is like a cool guy? And she was like, (laughs) yeah, "Yeah." she's like, yeah. And I was like, see, it's cool. He didn't think so. Uh, we're almost done with Twitter here. We're going through a lot of them here. Fuck. There's a there's 52 new messages in the Discord. What do we do? What? That's too many. Does, uh, uh, I could do quick ones. Does Bo ever get naughty at shows? Like maybe a little spin kick? No, I'm not. I never. never was really a spin kicker. I'm a stage diver, and I'll do a uh, I'll pit, but not no spin kicks. There'll be no spin kicks from me. Somebody said their favorite part of the episode was the Disharmony Rust episode. Favorite part of the show. Yeah. Colin shitting at whataburger.mp3. Dude, I mean, that That was was, incredible. That was the hardest we laughed. Was that Furnace Fest? uh, Yeah, that was Furnace Fest. Because you played it, like, randomly later on. Yeah. I would be like, what do you mean? And you'd be like, here's what I mean. (laughs) <laughs> it, yeah. was just like it was just an explosion so fucking i remember crazy. that now somebody said their favorite part of the show is colin being a top and bo being a bottom what do you think you like getting um, fucked in the ass <laughs> <laughs> what's a song you guys think each other did really well on and what's a song you think each other shit the bed on <laughs> <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> who uh, said that gundar uh, 420 
I think you did really good on. Uh, what do you think I shit the bed on? I don't know. I don't have an answer for this. You wouldn't know if I shit the bed on anything because you don't know what I'm playing. I wouldn't. I think. You How think do you guys so feel about being the quote unquote old heads for some of us? It's bizarre. It doesn't bother me anymore. I'm, anymore? I'm a bit older than you. You are. Yeah, there was a there was a point in time where I was like, I'm not an old. You know. Yeah. You kind of realized was, one day. I've been around for so long that I I was the youngest kid in the room for so long. Same. You know, and it was like. I was there's some half of that was like fuck this kid and half of that was like no we have to this he is the future you know yeah yeah so yeah. like for example Riley from Sound and Fury yeah this is pretty funny so in, when I was 14 or 15 years old uh on there was a a message board called Strange Notes okay Strange Notes was the B9 board only for California. Gotcha. Yeah, we had a couple of those. Yeah. It was run by Todd and Riley. Okay. Sound and Fury Records put out the Violation Possessed 7-inch. Okay. When the when the Violation Possessed 7-inch came out, in this whole era, the only way to hear these songs was to buy the 7-inch and listen to it. Yeah. Which, A, I don't have any money. B, I don't have a record player. Yeah. So 14, 15-year-old me on Strange Notes, on the, the the message board made by the guy that put the record out, Yeah. said, like, can anybody send me this record? <laughs> and I was immediately banned from the from the board. And, and young me is like, damn, I just want to hear the songs. Right. Riley unbans me. The guy that put the fucking record out unbans me. So clearly it was Todd that banned me. <laughs> Riley unbans <laughs> me. And it's like, I think it's more important to remember that a 15-year-old kid is trying to hear hardcore music than it is that he's trying to download hardcore music. And like, now, 15-year-olds are rare. The, mm. f- like, they're in Oxnard, I can tell you that much. Mm. But outside of Oxnard, the median age for a new hardcore show goer or listener is like 22. Sure. Yeah. When at the, like, I don't, this was all I had, you know, at that time it was like the only thing I cared about. So I can't imagine going through your life and then finding this, but that's another point. Yeah. Um, Nurturing the young listener and, and making them feel welcome is like the most important thing we can do. So if you're a little ass kid starting a band, <laughs> if you're 22 and starting a band, I'll I'll tr- I'll try to get to it and listen to it. Mm. If you're 15, I'm listening to it immediately. I'm gonna do everything I can to help you, okay? Because <laughs> I but like I must do to somebody what Riley did for me as That's a, a as a kid. Pretty crazy thing. And that was 16 years ago. You know, 17 years ago going on. And now, you know, still see him all the time. Yeah, it's awesome. He's still there booking a, an incredible, the best fest ever. Mm-hmm. Most of the old heads, when we came around, aren't around anymore. Although, I got a, a very nice DM from one who was a fan of the show. Gideon, nice. if you're listening, thank you, sir. Who was very, everybody in Chicago was very, like, cool with us because we were all 14 i got the first hardcore show that double cross played i got my license that day wow you know and they had portillo's afterwards so it was mm. really something so else. you drove to the show and then drove to portillo's yeah the portillo's was like near the show it was oh, in the suburbs it was awesome huge uh, <clears throat> somebody asked why are you choking Bo? is it because you hate him <laughs> <laughs> no. that's because i love him it's because I can, really. Favorite single favorite bit is when Colin threatened Morgan Spurlock because he took away the super size. Fuck that motherfucker. Morgan, if you're listening, which I know you are, you piece of shit. It's on site. Yep. You you ruined my life, you cocksucker. Okay. Uh Nij- uh Nijmedine. Oh, friend asks, of the show. Favorite things about me. <laughs> Great Kat, hugs. We, we love yeah, that's a that's a she'll break your fucking back. And she's also the best um, 
promo photographer. The best. To ever live. So. Uh, somebody's mad that we haven't talked about Bojangles. Love Bojangles. I've only had it once. Uh, I would say I maybe need- my maybe over Popeye's to me. Oh, In shit. terms of ch- chicken alone. It's my but namesake, so I reason. owe it, uh, you know. Uh, this one's from Clerp, and I, I, I want to, I think it's important. I'm bringing up the mental health question again in case it wasn't covered in the other recorded episode. What is touring like for your emotional and mental health? Oh, How does it God. impact your relationships? What resources do you have or wish you had on the road? Clerp, this is too good a question. She's, she's the best. This is t- t- we're two and a half hours in. Oh uh, shit. It's terrible for your mind. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's that's more than anything the reason that I'm not gonna do it full time anymore. It's terrible for you. In what ways does it affect you? Oh uh, man. I think every a single like a bad show in a city where I've had a good show. Oh, oh. dude. Cause then yeah. it's like, then it's like, okay, guess we're I'm, done. I'm ruined. Mm-hmm. Like this is my fault somehow. Mm-hmm. St. Louis wants me to kill myself. Mm-hmm. You know, that's what I'm getting out of this. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it terribly, terribly negatively impacts your relationships, your friendships. You know, you're on a tour. Your friends are all hanging out. You get home. They don't even know you anymore. You missed so many jokes. You missed so many movies. You know how many See, movies and games? I, I didn't I never beat Red Dead Redemption 2. I'm saying mm-hmm. this for the first time in my life here. I'm admitting it. I never beat Red Dead Redemption 2. And it's because I had to leave for a tour. Disgusting. Shameful. Um I am fortunate enough to I mean, you you as well, I would imagine, if God's hate toured now, but even when Twitching was touring, you know, I'm sure Taylor is one of if, is if not your best friend, you know, not my best friend, <laughs> but, uh, harm's way. I mean, James and Chris are my best friends. So I've been mm-hmm. very fortunate, at least with the friend thing Yeah, yeah. where it's like, that's who I would be hanging out with for the most part, but relationships. Oh, oh my God. It's Taylor's brutal. Pro- Taylor's, he's it's, that's a different category than yeah, best friend. It's brother. Yeah. He's you know. my brother. You're my brother, and Brody's my brother. Those are my those are my three brothers. You know, <laughs> in terms of like the relationships I have with people, mm-hmm. where I can go fuck you. What's for? What are you eating tonight? Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah like yeah. that's that's it's like I'm like I'm I'm legitimately saying like I hate you, and then yeah. ten minutes later can be like, what's up? Twenty piece. Buffalo. What are you doing? Yeah, exactly. Um, Sorry. Who do you think it. has it worse? I, and I think it's it's the latter, but I was gonna say us on tour or our partners. Partners at home. Partners at home. Partners at home hundred fucking percent. Absolutely. Got to walk the dogs. They get all the bad with clean. none of the good. Yeah, but in reality, but it's like it's important to note for for the partners that are listening to the show whose partners are touring. Mm-hmm. They're at work. You know, touring is work. Even if they're just sitting in the dude. even if they're sitting in the van, it's it's it is it is emotionally t- and physically taxing to respond to a single text sometimes. Oh, it can be. You know what I'm saying? Did you ever? Okay. Not naming names or getting into any specifics or anything. I'm saying vaguely. Was it ever like a story? You're reminded of a story after you've been home for a week or two, and it, uh, you get the why didn't you tell me about this when it happened? Is that ever? I don't know. I have a hard time, I guess, Don't. I have a hard time conveying to my partner at home what I'm doing. Mm, oh. Because so much of the day is just like sitting, loading, sitting, playing, loading, Dude, sitting, sleeping. The way my mind works, I don't, I can't communicate 90% of the things that happen to me. Yeah. 90% of my day is gone the second it happened. Yeah. So there will be months later, I'll be like, oh, yeah, then I did that. Yeah, it's like what the exactly. fuck are you talking about? Dude? Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, and I just saw exactly. I saw a clip of Rob Deerdeck talking <clears throat> about his relationship with his wife, where he's like, "Now I've gotten to a point where I write everything down, mm-hmm. and I just send it to her, and I'm like, here's what I did today. You know everything. Um, and there's part of that that's like, damn, how do I how do I automate that in some mm-hmm. way? Mm-hmm. 
would love to automate that. Um, I, I just got into calendaring. Yeah. The hard lore calendar, baby. Let's go. So that's one of like five calendars I have. Yeah. Yeah. Me you too. Know? yeah. And they're all updated. <sighs> it feels good. It does. But then I'll, I miss something and I'm like, I'm the, I'm, I'm the worst person in the world. Yeah. I'm you a know? piece of shit. Um, what are resources you wish you had or have on the road? I would say, per- personally speaking, and from what I see of my bandmates and other people in bands who have long-term partners mm-hmm. at home and stuff, it just seems to be patience. patience and that's what I huge. that's what I run out of immediately on tour. You do. Waiting for someone to shower, waiting for someone to shit, waiting for someone to get their food, waiting for someone to come load, whatever. I lose my mind waiting for people because I'm a very like, oh, this has to get done. Let's do it right now kind of mm-hmm. guy. So that I will makes say me it kind of snippy. It does make the world of difference. Like when you're t- in terms of like your partner at home. Yeah. Oh, getting a little choppy here. In terms of your partner at home being patient with you. Yeah. Is what like that's one of the most important things that we can ask for yeah. in this life. But also it is up to you to be like, hey, I'm I'm gonna call you at this time today because like you're doing a lot. I go, I owe that. Yeah. And I, like, I need, I need expressing one's needs and yeah, being I, like, I, I need to talk this much today. Totally, totally valid. But Just also give me, like, give me some right spot. now, Lana. Yeah. I'll be, we'll be on one of the hard lore trips or something. Mm-hmm. And I'll text her. And I'll be, I'll be worried. I'll be like, you good? Like, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm busy. And she's like, I don't give a fuck, man. My KD, right. I'm doing, I just went 30 and four on shipment, bro. <laughs> I don't need to talk to you. Yeah, that's Go. that's a that's that's a it's been she's, huge. She's something. Yeah. What's next? Let's see. Uh this might be a good wrap up question. There's there's fifty more. I mean the Discord is insane. Uh-huh. So if you had to pick one band's discography to give to a friend that does not listen to hardcore, but they're open to it. They're into maybe some Entry level rock. What band would you choose? Because the answer isn't Hatebreed, you know? If they were already into Slayer or something, then it would be Hatebreed. What are they? But if into? They're, they, let's just just vanilla. But they're like, I see these videos and that's really cool. And I don't want them to like it if that's how they think, you know? They're your friend, but just fuck them. On. Oh my God. <laughs> fuck my friend. Um, Fuck you, Dewey bitch. There's gotta be. There's like the, the gatekeeping is good a little bit, you know. Because well, of, of I think I, it is important that we're welcoming, of course. Whether or not it's a popular agreeing, thing to talk about, there are going to be people who are going to try to get into hardcore because of Coachella. Yeah, that we would all be better off not getting involved in hardcore. Absolutely, which I'm sure Scowl and Knocked Loose would all agree with. That's yeah. not like crazy, but like, that's like one out of a hundred. You know? Yes. Yeah. Very. Because right. the other ninety nine are going to be there to support bands. And let me tell you, these TikTok motherfuckers pay buy tickets. They and buy merch. merch. Yeah. We need them. The whole the <laughs> royal we. Yeah. Needs yeah. them because everybody benefits. Yeah. So the band whose discography I would show is Hatebreed. Okay. Because there's a there's a there's a three album trajectory. I can say. If you like the fast parts on this one, mm. listen to this other stuff. If you like the breakdowns on this one, listen to this other stuff. Fair enough. There's a there's a there's a roadmap from all from satisfaction, perseverance, rise, brutality to everything I think is worth anyone's time. Wow. You know? I can get to scowl from Hatebreed. Yeah, yeah. In in with one thing in between, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like the like the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. I can get a one degree of hate breed with any hardcore band. Okay. You think so? You think that's true? hundred percent. Try me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> mental. Hate breed is from Connecticut. <laughs> About two hours from Boston. <laughs> I stand corrected. Come on. What can I say? 
Yeah. Huh. You didn't say I couldn't use I didn't, geography. I really didn't. I really yeah. did not. Oh, What's the so band you would questions. pick? Um, honestly, and this is not me blowing smoke. I, I think the, the proof is just kind of in the pudding. I think Knocked Loose. Mm. It's heavy. It's catchy. Brian's I mean, vocals are pretty distinct. They've gotten plenty. They've the, the proof is in the pudding in the sense that like they've gotten probably a few thousand people into hardcore just by people watching them. If I had to choose an older band, let's say, yeah. someone who's not actively <laughs> already doing that actively yeah. well but i mean hey you don't, they don't need you to show them that like they right, heard right. knock loose and they right. were like what's it show me a thing okay you know valid what's the thing um yeah i would probably go with more of a punk thing just because of my vibe that's not what you sit and listen to though you know, now it isn't, but it's what got me here. So what would it be? Probably Chromax. Oh, I mean, that's still. They still get Apocalypse now, you know? Yeah, yeah. But but that's they what still I'm saying. Get the so hardest. I, I, I that's say, a great answer. Honestly. Do you like the fast stuff? OK, here's this record. Do you like the crossover right. stuff? Here's this record. Do you like the okay. actual kind of heavy, scary? Here's this. You know. OK, yeah, no, that's it's the same ideals, you know? <laughs> Yes. Those the same principles exist, except for you know there's pro- there's more of the singing, so you can go, oh if this is if you like this, right? Check out Scowl, you know, <laughs> the <laughs> Chromax to Scowl pipeline is one, one beat away, you know. Hey, breeds from Connecticut. Hey, breed Scowl Chromax. It's all one oh, thing. Done. What do you say? We got a. a Why don't you scroll ones. through? And just if one pops out at you, you go, oh, man, that's good. Okay. Oh, now they're arguing about pizza. So maybe the, keep the arguments out of the goddamn. When will Hardler have a fast food collab? Oh. <sighs> Not soon enough, motherfucker. Yeah. Straight up. Um, oh, here's. Oh, Colin. This is this is See? literally. This is what I want. Yeah. Master Killer tier video game original soundtrack oh my god bloodborne <laughs> uh skyrim I'm, I'm 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 giving the same rules here okay okay same rules i would to master killer skyrim is an excellent answer yeah, that's insane. Um, soundtrack. Full, like the full thing. Dark Souls 3. Uh, Demon Souls. <laughs> mm, that's probably it. I feel like that's a... I would probably have to throw Red Dead Redemption. Great soundtrack in there. But you don't, like, could you hum part of it right to me right now? No. That's what I'm saying. Touche. I could tell you, you could you could pick a boss from Bloodborne and I could tell you how their music Oh, goes. dude, well then yeah. Halo. Yeah, no, absolutely. But that's, again, yeah, no, that's a great pick. Which one? Combat Evolved, first one. I think Just two the, is the better. You think that's the better one? Yeah. I just think when you would load up, turn on your Xbox, and you know. I'm still, to this day, the only person to sing the Halo theme in the Sound City uh, echo chamber. I saw that. I, uh, that is very Hans Zimmer. It is. It's very Zimmer-esque. He loves going, he loves palm muting a piano. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Yeah, it does. <laughs> well, that's it. That was the rest of the yard. Of the messages were like arguing. Awesome. So it's good. Thank you all for joining us for this very special first anniversary Q and A. Can you believe it? 
No, man. To this, I never will. I can't wait for the 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 second year birthday Q and A. We got some fun episodes planned. We got good stuff planned. We got tied yeah. down coming up. We got tied down. We got coming up on the slate in the show. You hear me out. You ready? We got best breakdowns ever, volume two. Had to do it. We got Lars Fredrickson coming up. Oh my god. We got Jeremy Bohm, Touche Mori coming up. We got Fury of Five coming up. It's going to be an incredible month. And Phoenix? Dying Phoenix? So. We might have, we were supposed to have Dying Phoenix. They built last week, but we might have them still. <laughs> but either way, yeah. that's, uh, that's a great month coming. Um, and this is, this is a procedurally generated show where the things are going to happen every week in our lives where. You just blew my mind. It is. It really is. There's always going to be more. Oh, we got a real fun one too. The best, the best EPs in seven inches of all time. That one's great. Oh. Um, best band names of all time. Best band names of all time. Oh. Ranking artwork of bands discographies. Because I want to do that with Metallica, and then I realized, mm. why stop there? We should do fast food, like tier list, like an actual like tier maker, a real deal tier 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 maker of all fast food. We could do that easy. I go into, I turn into little Bo. Love it. Love when you're little Bo. Uh, but this was a very long, fun time for both of us. We shot the shit for like 20 minutes before we started. Yeah, it was badass. That's the way, that's the way it should be. No, I'm saying even before we like clap. Right? <laughs> oh no, yeah. We've Remember been here we for like started fucking, over. I've been here. I've been sitting here all day. So thank you so much <laughs> all right. for joining us. Uh, we love you so much. Thank you. This is the, I mean, this, this first year was unbelievable. For the first year of a pod, come on! Oh my god! And it is truly, I'm. This is not hyperbole. Like, mm. the, any the things you're seeing and the growth and whatever is because you're listening to it. Yeah, and telling so friends. It has Speed, nothing to do with us. <laughs> Speed was here the other day. Josh went into Carhartt and said that dude was watching the show. So hey, shout out Carhartt. Carhartt man in Wicker Park. I'll be in there. Work in <laughs> progress or just for Carhartt? no, just standard. But you know. Blue collar pod, dude. Dude, black collar. Black collar goth yeah. workers. That's what we, that's who we are, and that that's who I am, and that's who that's I care what about. I care about. Uh, thank difference. you so much. We love you. Bye. We'll see you next week. Bye.